Okay, let's just put it like this. And let's come up with a rule. Don't say what you won't say in their face. Dion. His wife too. You think so you would you Man, if me and if be if me and Beyonce had to be around each other for two weeks, you right I'd get her. So he's a, so he's a crip rapper, rolling 60, right? Mm -hmm. King Vaughn is a serial killer, okay. documented by the FBI. Yeah. Who wouldn't say him? I'm not. Friday, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. And I'm over here I'm trying not. to talk. I did, and you, you still so talking? I'm, you interfering with me and you my You don't bitch. even love her. I love my. How you gonna love her? And you gonna put your hands on? Same reason you whoop your kids and tell them you love them, and this why you doing this? No, no. Y'all you weapon. See, I don't fight fair. See, most is uh, a prize fighter. I'm a surprise fighter. <laughs>I really do promise to give good content for the masses, but most of all, I promise to keep it funky for your asses. Now, boy, oh boy, oh boy, are we in for a treat today. Boy, I went from possibly losing it to now being on the same page, been DMing and communicating and conversating for months. We, yeah, I, I, so long that, bruh, we finally here. You may have seen him on social media, uh, entrepreneur, comedian, Influencer at its all time uh, heights. I present the song, introduce the others, Mr. Charleston White. What's up, man? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, li I like that introduction. Uh, boogie, boogie it all, huh? Mr. Yeah. Boogie it all. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it was one thing left out out of the introduction. Talk to me. Uh, I started out uh, on the internet as a, as a frustrated youth advocate. Okay. Uh, I wasn't an entrepreneur. I was a struggling single dad uh, who, who, who financially uh, didn't have the means to put gas in the car every day, okay. but was still working in the community. Uh, because of that, uh, that, that struggle uh, and, and, and that small time frame of, of struggling, uh, I, I evolved in, in, into entrepreneurship uh, by way of the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, but I started out frustrated. Uh, so when I came to the internet, uh, I didn't even know you could make a dollar off the internet. Uh, financially, uh, I didn't know how to create a business uh, to make any profit from a business. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I was supposed to be begging and asking for donations. So the internet taught me a lot uh, and, and it helped me to become a, all those things uh, that you just named. So really what I, what I do know um, and I've told you this while we were talking in uh, anticipation to get you on Funky Friday. Behind everything that you say, controversial, agreed upon, or disagreed upon, behind everything that you say, I can agree that there's some truth to what you say. And, and a message. Uh, I ain't just talking to be talking. Mm. Uh, I ain't start out trying to be funny. Mm. Uh, it, when I was describing post babies with run-down Michael Jordan tennis shoes, uh, I wasn't saying that to be funny. Mm. Uh, when I was talking about them ghetto with them weaves on their head, riding in the car, patting them head because they can't scratch their hair, and their daughters grow up patting their head because they don't know that's what their mom... So I wasn't saying that to be funny. Mm. Uh, when I was talking about the siren laying around the house, watching a woman uh, go to work with that good in the bed, but he can't fix no alternator, he can't get no job. He laying around the house, jacking his off on the phone, uh, going outside to hang with a bunch of on to end up in jail by Friday. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wasn't saying that to be funny. Uh, that was my observation uh, from, from, from uh, doing qualitative studies in our community, from community work. So I wasn't trying to be funny. The internet told me I was funny. For one, I didn't know I looked funny. The internet told me I looked funny. Oh, look at his eye. Ah, oh, look at his dread. So, nigga, I didn't know I looked funny. I thought I was cute. So, so the internet shaped this what they what they see today. Okay. 
Well, I, I must admonish the viewer to understand this. We ain't even five minutes into this segment, <laughs> and we are already uh, ruffling some feathers or, or, or may. Would you d don't bring your shadow ban ass over here to Funky Friday <laughs> and get my shit shadow banned too. But we gonna have a good time today because. One thing that I do believe in is accountability. One thing I do believe in is making sure that I don't judge, right? Yeah. Even though in my religion, I love it so much so that it reigns supreme of everything in, in my life. I think sometimes as Christians, we can't have this judgmental attitude. Uh, I, uh, one of the first things some of the most devout Christians do when you go to church is, where are you being? Mm -hmm. I ain't seeing you. And so when you go, if you go to church and then you don't go to church and you come back to church, the church will make you feel shame in their judgmental approach. Well, mm -hmm. Where you been? We ain't seen you in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, so I get it. Uh, it's a very, and I'm a, I'm a, I wouldn't identify as a Christian, but I have Christian values and beliefs. Uh, I believe in Jesus. I believe that he's the son of God. Uh, I just don't take the title as a Christian. Uh, man, I just believe. I just believe. So what are you? Uh, a believer. That don't make you a Christian? Uh, no. Uh, because I also like to sin, and most Christians don't admit that they like to sin. But you do understand that Jesus died for all our sins. Yeah, that's why I sin. That's why I sin and just say, I, I pick my sins wisely. Okay, but you know you're not perfect. I don't want to be perfect. You, I, I think that is true. But, but, but my saying is most Christians don't admit that they like to sin. Most people can't admit to the sins that they do that they like to do. But, See, some that we do, but we also got some secret ones that we like to do. But that's everybody. That's, that, that, that's not Christians, uh, Muslim, Hinduism. That's not, that's just everybody as humanity. Uh, when, when, when the FBI studied Malcolm and when they studied Martin, one went and spoke and came back to the hotel and prayed and talked on the phone with his wife and they don't have no dirt on him. He was Muslim. The other one went and spoke and came back to the room and partied and fucked like a motherfucker in every town he went to. That was the Christian. So there's a difference. One was studied full time. How you know that though? Uh, like, because see, now you're using my platform uh, trying to bring all uh, this uh, because, speculation uh, of Martin, uh, Martin Luther uh, the King. Because it's documented evidence. Uh, they, 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 the, the FBI said that Malcolm X was a saint compared to the doctor. Uh, it was ve it's very well documented that, that Dr. Martin Luther King uh, was just like any man. Uh, he was a whoremonging preacher. Mm. It's documented uh, compared to Malcolm, who has no documentation of doing anything such like the preacher. See the difference? I, I hear exactly what you're saying. But that doesn't necessarily uh, rectify you not being unknown to your religion. I think. Oh, uh, I, I, I don't want to be a religious man. Uh, I don't want to be Muslim. I don't want to be Christian. I don't want to be Hindu because I don't pick up the books. Uh, I want to be able to grab hold to the spirit. Yes, sir. Uh, mo most of the people who I heard talk to books and can recite the books don't show the spirit. Yeah. They don't. They can't access the spirit. But. This is this is where I can agree with you, but also it's is for me to also admonish you to say you use your uh platform for people to receive the word in your own right. You see what I'm saying? Uh I I don't deliver the word, uh, because I don't know the word. Mm -hmm. Uh I, I walk with the spirit. My mother and them know the word. I don't know the word. I hadn't picked up the Bible to read the word. I got the spirit uh, because when I wanted the word, I couldn't get the word. I was locked away in a cell and they wouldn't give me the Bible. Mm. So for, for some, some strange reason, I was able to access the spirit. Mm. Uh, that's the spirit that Jesus said that will write God's word upon your heart. Mm. Uh, I don't want to be Christian because Christians can't access the spirit. They all got the word. I don't want the word, God. I want your spirit because it says with this spirit that I can do greater works than Jesus. There's no Christian I ever heard to say they can do greater works than Jesus. And Jesus himself said that you can do greater works with this spirit. So I don't want you. I don't want the Christian word. Give me that spirit Jesus was talking about that raised the dead that allows you to walk on water. I ain't seen a Christian walk on water yet. But 
isn't that the truth for you to to understand and say, yo, I'm gonna be what I've never seen? Uh, I, if you not if you had never seen it, you can't become it. So I watched my mother take care of children. I watched my mother feed people with her with the with, with her word of God. I watched my mother pray to get my grandmother off drugs. I watched my mother use the word of God. Okay, mama, that word worked good enough for you, but I need the spirit. Mm. The things that I've gotten involved in and the things that I do and the things that I face, the word ain't gonna help me, mama. I need the spirit. To this, to that point, take me through this whole uh, background of what we see now and what had the most influence to you becoming what we see today. I fell in the washing machine when I was five years old. So I was, my mother was asleep. I snuck outside and I was in the laundry mat playing in, in, on top of a washing machine. And I was jumping up and down, getting ready to jump off of it, but I was jumping hard. The lid popped open and I fell in and I broke everything from my waist down. We end up suing Quick Wash. And, and, and the reason we won the lawsuit is one of the reasons why now when you open a lid to a, to a washing machine, it stops. It was supposed to stop and it didn't. So I broke everything from my waist down. So I had a bone pop out here, a bone pop out here. I had pins in my leg. This is at five years old in a, in a, in a washing machine spinning like this. I pulled myself out and then passed out. I was in a full body cast from here all the way down with a stick between my leg. So I had to lay flat like this, and I had to learn how do we walk again. I was walking in that body cast. They thought it was a miracle. They thought I was a miracle child. I rose up one day in that body cast and started walking with a broken up body. Uh, I got the spirit of God at an early age. So two years later after that, I put my right eye out. So I've had nine eye surgeries. When I used to, when they used to put that, that oxygen mask and make a nigga go to sleep, somewhere in the Bible they says to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. Whenever you go to surgery, you're absent from your body. In my mind, I vividly remember having dreams going somewhere to heaven as a kid. So you only have sight in one eye? Yeah, this is a prosthetic limb. It's a glass eye. Oh, wow. So that's from five to seven. Okay. So I had to learn how to rewalk again with no problem. Mm. So I ain't got no hip or nothing. So if I was to stand, I ain't got no hip or nothing. So that's at five, it's seven. So from seven to 12, I had nine eye surgeries. Mm -hmm. So I never really got to go to school. So I had a private tutor. It's things that I remember educational wise that I don't know how I got this knowledge. They don't teach us about Jim Brown in school. Nigga, I know everything about Jim Brown, the, ab the abolitionist. Mm -hmm. I got knowledge and information that, but that white tutor, I had a white tutor in the 80s coming to my home to teach me. So I was groomed to be an intellectual. So I didn't really get to go to school to the sixth grade. By the time I got to the sixth grade, I caught a capital murder case in the eighth grade. So I'm an institutionalized baby from medicine, hospitals, to now incarceration. I'm a book-driven baby. I've been reading books all my life. I ain't been outside playing. I ain't played no sports. I've been reading books. I've got a brain full of knowledge. I've been watching television, studying movies and actors. Mm -hmm. That's how I can act. So what you see now is a product of a system. Nigga, I'm an educational baby. That's why my knowledge and my articulation is what it is, because when I went into the system, I began to read more books. Mm -hmm. So when niggas were playing dominoes and, and, and watching rap videos, I was reading Danielle Steele Love novels. So I'm very charismatic. I'm very charming. Is <laughs> <laughs> that what you think? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's, that's how I've been able to get in by, by getting in trouble. But let me... Let, let, let getting me in intercept, front of a sir. judge and being able to say, yes, sir, no, sir, no, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Getting in front of a probation officer, knowing how to make eye contact, sit up straight, look them straight in the eye. All of that was charming things I learned as a kid to yeah. get out of trouble. Out of all those books that you had access to, you ain't never had access to a Bible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I refused to read the Bible because I couldn't, as a kid, I couldn't, I couldn't connect to the language that the Bible wrote. Thou art. 
I couldn't, my understanding couldn't comprehend that. Okay, do you, did, were you, were you uh, coherent to understanding that there were different versions of the Bible too? Uh, yeah, I, I understand about the council when, when, when they introduced uh, Cesar Bagario as the white man with the blonde hair and they took out pieces of the Bible. So I know the Bible had been dissected to brainwash, to control. Yes, sir. Uh, so what I did was... But not I, more or less that level. I'm what, talking about in, uh, the international version. I understand it. But, but as a kid, you don't know that. Yes, sir. As a kid, you don't know to pick up this book and say, okay, they got a King James Version. Okay, you don't know this. All you know is, here, read the Bible. They said, yeah. read the Bible. Sure. And you can't read really understand what the preacher's saying. Correct. But I have a mother who are quoting scriptures, and I'm hearing her say these scriptures, but they're not making no sense. Mm -hmm. All things work for the good of those who love God is called according to his will and his purpose. My mom locked up here for murder, and I can't, I'm going to be here for four years. How is this going to work for my good? Well, some, but she's trying to explain this to me, and I'm saying, man, that stuff don't make shit, don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. I'm rejecting everything she's saying. For one, most kids reject what their parents teach them. Because you think the world no more than your parents. So this ain't making sense, mama. This God that so loved the world that'll give us his son, then why, why this kid over here get molested if God love us? Where my daddy at, mama, if God so good? You keep hollering by God good. How he good? How? And so it ain't making sense. So, so you don't believe in this scripture, raise up a child in the way it should go. As a kid, don't know scripture makes sense. I know it now. Yes, of course. So, but, 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 but as a kid, it says train up a child. Yes. How many parents are really training? We're raising our kids. We ain't training them. That's why when they get in situations, they don't go to their training to make good choices. Mm -hmm. When police get in situations, they go to their training. They training is to shoot. Shoot. Were shoot to kill. Why you didn't shoot him in the leg? Because he was in a situation where he had to fall back on his training. And there's a silhouette where they're trained to shoot center Chess. mass. So Chess that's why they don't shoot you in the leg. So what training are we giving our children where they get in a situation where they choose the training? We're not training. We raise our kids. How do we raise them? Food, shelter, clothing. We ain't training these kids. We ain't training these motherfuckers. So we ain't trained. We got to go to work. Mama got to go to work, daddy cross town playing stepdaddy, making more babies. Who training us? Nobody. Mm. We're being indoctrinated at school and we're being programmed by the culture. Who's training us? So we can mistrain up a child. That's why the kids ain't going no way because ain't nobody training them. They're raising them. They're providing good homes, good clothes, good foods. But other than that, there's no training. Mm -hmm. That's why we're not in Boy Scouts. Uh, that's why we're not in ROTC. That's why we're not in, in, in no type of physical training to teach us how to do push-ups outside of sports. So as a kid, you, your parents are trying to introduce you to God, but you looking at the circumstances in a situation that y'all growing up in. So God ain't making sense to children no more. It ain't making sense. Was I blessed because when I go to school, the kids at school ain't blessing their food, but you got me blessing my food. It ain't making sense. Ain't nobody in school blessing their food, so I'm supposed to go to school and pray over my food. No, I ain't doing that, Mom. Mm. Because my peers supersede what you're trying to teach me if you don't have a bunch of money to buy my attention. So my mother, had a, my mother was financially stable to buy our attention. What's your mom doing? Uh, my mom worked for General Motors, retired from General Motors, uh, the backbone of America, the blue-collar worker yes, in sir. the 80s. In the 80s. So uh, we were very financially stable. I had my own, I had my own bedroom, homie, uh, in the third grade. I had my own phone line. I had the, the bunk bed, uh, a bed with the desk. Uh, I had the basketball gold. I had the remote control car. We had the Nintendo with the power pad, the duck hunting game. I had the Jabos. I had all the name brand stuff that a kid could want. Uh, but for one, mom wasn't at home. She had to work. Mm. So she provided a great home life. But when we got out of school, she was going to work. Uh, daddy retired from the Navy. Uh, he doing his own thing. Did you, did you, were you raised in a household with your mom and your dad? No, just mom. Were they ever together? Uh, yeah, they were together the first part of my life. Well, but that's, that's a vague memory. Yeah, but when you say first part. I have no memory. Okay, now, do you think that that had any type of tra uh, trauma in your growth as a man? Uh, the absence of a father, the absence of a father in any child's life 
leaves a child hurt, but ultimately develops a child as an angry kid. And he can't, can't nobody explain why this little motherfucker just angry. That's the absence of a father. But so you, both you speak, my brother. So, you're speaking as a, from the son's perspective or the female's uh, uh, perspective? I'm speaking both. from the son's perspective. So okay. both my brother and I grew up with just a good mother, a good loving mother. When I was eight or nine years old, homie, my brother looked at me and said, when I grow up, I'm going to kill somebody. Mm. Man, I looked at that nigga and ran downstairs. Mama, mama, Kevin, say when he grew up, man. Boy, come here. What, what you mean? Well, I grew up, I'm going to kill. And so she spanked him when she should have been exploring that anger. Mm -hmm. Long before a kid gets angry, they feel hurt. Mm -hmm. Nigga, where my daddy at? Mama, where daddy at? What Tupac say? He heard mama crying. Mama, where my daddy at? Heard you crying late night through the bedroom door. And do you love me, mama? Why they keep on calling me nigga? Get my weight up with my hate and pay them back when I'm bigger. So that's the 12 year old big body kid, nigga, that they done put in football that grandmama them scared of. When he get mad, he huffing and puffing. He kick the door. He punch a hole in the wall. He push his little sister down. Get that weight up with my hate. So just think about my brother saying this. Nigga, I'm eight years old. He 10. Nigga, he killed somebody at 17. So I'm trying to piece it all together. So the anger, right? So we hurt in the beginning. But before you hurt, you feeling unloved. No, hold on, hold on. Check that. Truth. Truth to that. But in your household, you raised by your mother. Parents was never together. Mm -mm. You guys, three boys. Two, two boys. So just you and your brother. Just me and my brother. Two boys. So you only got one sibling. Yeah. So. But, I, but I had a sister come later in life when okay. I was 13. Okay. So we got uncle, we got granddaddy, we got grandmama, we got aunts, we got cousins. Mm -hmm. So we got a big family. Yes, and, we got grand, and we got males there. But they ain't the right kind of male. Granddaddy got a barber shop. Uh, granddaddy went to the military. Granddaddy retired from Paul Lumber's yard. Granddaddy work at the bus barn. He the supervisor at the bus barn, but he pimping. He got all the hoes boosting and stealing. Uh, granddaddy catch a, a, a major federal drug case and make the front page paper, right? So I remember my mother telling us when I was like in the fifth grade, don't nobody, don't go to school and tell nobody that's your granddaddy. His name Freddie White. Uh, my uncle is a pimp. My granddaddy got the barber shop. I'm growing up with granddad and uncle them at the barber shop, seeing the hustlers and the players and the pimps. It's the black exploitation era. It's yes, the sir. 80s. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I got men in my life, but my mother is contrasting and countering what we're seeing. Right. She's trying to raise us to be opposite of her brother and her daddy. So she's trying to instill good morals. But nigga... Who fucks up the kids more than the bullshit uncles in the black family? Because Uncle Wayne is the pimp with the Rolls Royce. Uncle Wayne is the pimp walking through with the briefcase full of money, the trash bags of money. So as a kid, you see the dynamics of how the family treat Uncle Wayne. Everybody kiss his ass, and he a woman beater. So everybody kiss his ass, so it's no different than a D-boy uncle who in the household with the mama, who got the favorite brother, mm -hmm. he coming through with the pants sagging and the gun. The nephew and them is picking up these traits. Mm -hmm. As he stopped through and get us with money, get out with money, mm -hmm. rub them on the head, let them ride in the car with the hoes and the bitches. So I was, I was a little king, like the little kid finesse two time guy. I was that little nigga with my uncle them, mm -hmm. being exposed to this shit. So that's the dynamic of the Loving single black mother who's God fearing, uh, who's trying to teach their kid, her kids good morals and values, but she don't have the time because she got to work and mm -hmm. provide a good living for them. And, and there is a missing piece in the father being. The absence of the father. Yeah. So, the, the, so the absence of the father, who's supposed to step in? An uncle, a cousin, somebody within Some the family. Some male figure. Within the family before she have to go out and get a coach. Correct. But nigga, there's no positive male figures. Mm hmm they teaching us the bullshit. Mm -hmm. Toxic. Toxic. And they telling us, don't listen to your mama. Boy, you going to be a trick listening to your mama. Mm -hmm. they, you, so they really got you. So, so yo, yo, as a child, you're battling different things. Don't listen to your uncles. And your uncle saying, don't listen to man, your- your mama don't know what she talking about. You see what I'm yeah, saying? You're going to be but, a little bitch. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you going to be a man? Da, 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 da. We, we all go through those types so of So not only that, when mama leaves. Just like every other kid, what we do, we cut on that television. Mm -hmm. 
So now, when we cutting on the television at this time, homie, yeah, uh, excuse me. Uh, gangsterism being introduced. Mm -hmm. Nigga, mama at home. And, and, and what I see on TV is, is, is being propagated. It's being glorified, an mm -hmm. image, imagery, right? It, it, it's no more Big Daddy Kane's. It's no more Kid and Play. It's no more MC Hammer niggas dancing. Uh, imagery is now uh, being subjected to children mm -hmm. uh, by through, through the hip hop culture. The bad boy, the, the outlaw. Come on, the, homie. The, NWA, the gangster, yeah, yeah. nigga. Uh, fuck school. I yeah. pull a G about a week. Fuck school. Just that. Just that small line right there in a rap song. I pull a G about a week. Fuck school. That was KRS One saying that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so when I cut off my television, nigga, them images that I see, that's that like Uncle Wayne, the pimp. Yeah, that's who you relate to. Come on now. So now I'm spending the night over my homeboy houses, nigga. They brothers is uncles is drug dealers yeah. and gangsters. They looking like the imagery. Mm -hmm. So now we're starting to take on the image. Uh, how do we learn the behavior of gangsters? Through the lyrics in the movies are now being shown to us. Mm -hmm. uh, now, rather than us wanting to play football, uh, nigga, we want to be too sweet. We playing too sweet. The guy that can whoop everybody in prison in the movie Penitentiary. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of doing kung fu uh, and doing karate, uh, Nigga, we playing high top and rocket on colors. So, mama at work while all this dynamics is changing. With no, with no absolute clue. Don't have a clue what's yeah. going on because nobody is hip to this new culture, really. Yes, sir. So now, so now you have people who are becoming aware of, of the words in, in, in these lyrical contents, and now they're starting to put parental advisory labels mm -hmm. on, 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 on tapes. But mama and them don't have the time to sit and listen to this shit. They tired. They getting out work tired. Mm -hmm. Then one of us is having problems in school. So she got to take out work to come deal with this one. So because she dealing with this one, guess what? The younger one flying under the radar getting in trouble because the oldest one is getting in so much trouble. Right. And that's what's happening in these households. And it's, becoming, it's becoming overwhelming. It's only one parent. It's, becoming it's only one parent. Not only that, the problems and the frustration of the children is mounting on top of whatever problems you're having at work, whatever financial problems, and your relationship problems. So along that, as you're, or not just you, but what you've been able to verbalize and, 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 and picture paint is a typical situation in... Black America. I call it the traditional single African American parent home. It's so Trump, uh, not problematic. It, it's trauma based. Uh, it's, it's trauma. It's trauma based. In that in that household that's festering, and you're you're building the next generation of killers, uh, pimps, drug dealers, because that's what they see. Out of fear, uh, you do this. It, it's some mothers. All my partners, they got the gangster mamas. Mm -hmm. uh, them niggas was some of the most hardened killers in the streets because their mothers groomed them. Mm -hmm. uh, the nigga who was groomed to, to, to be hard on a woman, uh, he's very abusive mm -hmm. because his mother taught him these traits. And, 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 and whatever mama teaches, us, we stand on it. I'm going to say it again, nigga. Whatever mama teaches, us, we stand on it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why, nigga, I repeat a lot of shit my mama say. Nigga, mama said that the Bible... So, nigga, so if you... Uh, the street mama. That's why the whole mama is so dangerous. Uh, but the loving, over-nurturing mama is just as dangerous as the whole mama who teaching him the, the, the street shit. Yes, sir. Be because, because she handicaps him. And, and, and what ends up happening is, out of his rebellion to be free as a boy in a male, he overcompensates with being over-masculine. Because mama done gave him all this... Everything. So he try to play over mass. He too tough. He too tough. That's the nigga too tough. Over masculinity is the driving force for niggas to crash out. Mm. Nigga want to fight all the time. That's mama. He don't know to think because analytic, being analytical is a man's natural behavior, not in, uh, an emotional state. Nigga, we been groomed to be emotionally responsive and emotionally driven men because of our loving mothers.
She's so loving, she only whoop us when she's frustrated. That's where we learn to hit when we get mad. Mm -hmm. that, Sit down it. somewhere. Bow, 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 they hit you. Mm -hmm. And secretly, they feel guilty because I've done it as a parent. Yeah. Feel bad in the motherfucker, but you done already delivered the lick. Yes, sir. I got a friend by the name of Terrence Sampson. He did 29 years on a 30-year sentence for murder. Uh, when he was 12 years old, he stabbed the next-door neighbor 90, 93 times. He said he had his first homicidal thought when he was five years old, after his dad had brutally beat him. But right after the thought, he said his dad walked in with tears in his eyes and said, son, I'm sorry. Imagine had his daddy done that before the thought. Mm, he would have saved a life. Come on, homie. So, so Frustration is a motherfucker as a parent. Before, before we get too ahead of ourselves, I'm trying to paint a picture here, and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to take people on this journey. When you were, you took me through six to eight, uh, you talked about your brother uh, committing a, 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 a crime. For you, at 14, or throughout that whole process of, of juvenile, what was, what was that like for you? Oh, uh, it was traumatizing. Uh, because you got to think, homie, I, I'm, a, I'm a mama's boy. Mm -hmm. Nigga, I'm the baby. And I just come from being hurt. So I've been in the hospital most of my life. Yes, sir. I'm a nurtured child. I'm a nurtured child who, who needed to be accepted. Uh, I didn't play football, didn't play basketball, so I needed to be accepted. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I found acceptance through, through, through negativity. Violence. Uh, uh, ultimately committing crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't, I learned to be violent. I'm not a violent person. Uh, I can be violent. I learned how to be. Uh, I, I, I'm, I've done a lot of violent things in my life, but I was playing, mm -hmm. uh, trying to fit in with the environment. Uh, we laughed after, after we committed that murder, but it wasn't funny. But what happened though? Uh, we went to the mall uh, to go steal some starter jackets. So I had ran, I had ran away from home. So uh, my mother, I told you I, I got a, a younger sister. So my mother was pregnant. My brother was already off in the boys home. So my brother had already been to the boys home like two or three times, mm -hmm. right? So he was already troubled. Because he was so troubling and giving mama such a hard time, I'm going through the adolescent stage. Mm -hmm. And of course the adolescent stage is gonna be a bunch of rebellion. Right. So, I'm really following his lead, but I'm flying under the radar. Correct. So mama and missing a lot of shit because I'm charming, I know how to pull my pants up, yeah. and I'm sneaking out. So mama don't know until I start getting arrested. Conniving. Very conniving, mischievous, mischievous. as they called it back then. Correct. So, so my mom get pregnant with my little sister. Uh, and, and, and naturally that, that triggered me into another part of rebellion. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna be the baby no more. Right, you the man. Yeah, right? yeah, gonna, yeah, 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 I ain't gonna the, be the baby no more. You the big brother no now. More. Yeah, but I didn't want to be the big brother. I want to be the baby. Yeah. Nigga, yeah, I want, I want, I'm the baby. Uh, and, and so naturally I rebelled at, at, at 13 years old, going on 14 mom for to have another baby. So I ran away from home. Uh, and, and I tell this story, I used to run away from a good home, nigga, my own bedroom, walking on marble floors, a uh, bathtub trimmed in gold, uh, nigga, food in the icebox to go to go play poor with my partners in the projects mm -hmm. because I wanted to be accepted amongst the poor because the culture in our community make you feel like you ain't real if you ain't embraced by the poor. Mm -hmm. So well-to-do kids uh, throw everything away just to go hang with, with the poor in the projects all day, doing nothing, just hanging. So that's what I wanted to do, man. Uh, so I ran away from home and went and did it. And went on a crime spree from snatching purses, stealing cars, breaking into houses. Uh, that's how we was able to get the gun. Uh, we broke into uh, one of my former girlfriend's houses whose dad was a, a Dallas police officer at the time. Uh, stole their Nintendo VCR, went and pawned it. Uh, just on a crime spree. But boy, you was hell, boy. We we see God. see see children are impulsive, right? That that's where brain development comes in at, right? The prefrontal cortex. So most kids, unless they come from extreme poverty, 
are not committing crimes for financial gain. Mm. It's for the thrills and feels, the excitement of this shit, the rush. Yeah, the rush. So that's the, the impulse. Yeah, that's the impulsiveness of a kid when you're supposed to be getting this playing football. You're yeah. supposed to be getting this in boxing, yeah. but we're not. So this the element of children that's getting their sports fix, right? Yeah. So it was just for fun. And it ultimately ended up costing an a, a innocent man uh, uh, his life. So we go to the mall. Right. The plan is just to go to Foot Locker, grab some hats and some starter jackets and, and, and run out. So the first time we went, they had a, a, a young black dude look like he run fast. <laughs> uh, so we didn't do it. I got two partners right now today, nigga named Tawan Harris and Denarcus Mile. Both of them niggas older than me. So the first crew we went to go do it with, we were like, nah, man, fuck that. I said, man, let's go get Denarcus. So I went to go get Denarcus just to drive, and Tawan was over there getting his hair cut. Them niggas supposed to call the murder case. He was cutting Tawan her out. The nigga said, nah, man, come back and get me. Well, I was too anxious. I ain't go back and get Denarcus. I went and got Torn, Big Torn, and Little Torn. Went to the mall, grabbed a jacket, grabbed a hat, ran out. And in the process of us running out, uh, my victim, which was a little small white guy by the name of Michael Levy, uh, he had just got married three days prior to that. He saw what was happening because he was working on his car in the parking lot. And so he tried to stop us. He ran and dove on top of the car. He started hitting the windshield uh, with whatever wrench he had in his hand. And so I'm in the back seat saying, uh, man, go, nigga, drive. My partner in the front seat, he can't put the car in gear. You know, back then, them motherfuckers go up and down. Yeah. And, and, and you can have the car and drive and cut it off and take the keys out. Mm. And so that's what he did. He reached inside the car uh, and cut the car off and took the keys. And so... Uh, and how old were you at this time? I was 14. I had just turned 14. So I was 14. We was all 14, 15, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we get out the car, I was sitting on the gun. So I get a gun to my partner. So I'm in career. Man, shoot that motherfucker. Uh, and he shoot him. Uh, he wasn't trying to kill him. It's it just that uh, the gun that we had was a, was a, was a 38. Well, actually, it was a 357 snub nose uh, with blue tip hollow points in it. So when he shot the gun, it went up mm -hmm. and, and hit him one time in the chest. And, and uh, because of the bullets, uh, they thought we shot him in the back. You know, because that motherfucker- Yeah, they, expand as soon as on, yeah, on impact. So, yeah, so they, they thought we shot him in the back. Uh, he, he died in the parking lot. So Tony Dorsett had just opened a club up. Uh, he was still playing for the Cowboys. I think he had just retired for the Cowboys or was still playing. He had just opened a club up right where, 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 where the incident occurred. So it, it made headline news, a uh, front page paper. Uh, it, it was real big because we were four black children who had killed killed the white man, and in 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 a week within that same week, uh, three skinheads had had killed this black man that that was sitting on, on the back of his car. So both of them were very high profile cases, which of course uh, in, in the media the white kids were being treated lenient, and, and we would get more time. Uh, but I got less time than anybody. But my mother was financially uh, able to go out and, and get some of the best lawyer representation in the city, which was a guy by the name of Carl Mallory and, and, and Louis Stearns. Uh, and, and Carl Mallory is dead now. Uh, may God rest his soul. And, 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 and Mr. Stearns ended up becoming Judge Louis Stearns. So he just retired from a judge. So I had two of the best lawyers uh, in, in the city. Uh, my co-defendants, how many mom and them couldn't afford that shit? Mm -hmm. uh, one of my co-defendants uh, got out on bond and uh, his mother moved him to, uh, I think, Oklahoma or something, and he ended up dying, uh, running from the police in a high-speed chase. The, the, my oldest co-defendant got 99 years, went back on appeal, and was released on a 25-year sentence. The 16-year-old shooter got 75 years. He's still incarcerated right now to this day. Our crime happened September 18, 1991. So I'm one of the first children. Oh my, I just got chills. Uh, I'm one of the first Ooh. children uh, in Fort Worth, Texas to be tried and adjudicated for the crime of murder in the early 90s. In the state of Texas, I'm one of the first children who followed in a group of children uh, who was tried, adjudicated, and sentenced for the crimes of capital murder and murder who was sentenced under Texas juvenile law. It's called Texas Juvenile Determined Sentencing Law where a kid can be sentenced up to 40 years. So I got a 12 year sentence uh, for capital murder. So, so uh, take me back real quick. 
to the individuals who killed the black boy, how much, how long did they get? Uh, boy, I almost said his name, Josh. Uh, I think Josh got like 12 or 13 years. Uh, the, the, the white guy who pulled the trigger, he got like 50 years. Uh, and then the other guy got like shit, barely 20 years. So all of them got significantly uh, uh, lower amounts of time than, than my counterparts. So me, me and Josh, we, we was in the boys' home together. Uh, uh, he was just a white kid, homie. Uh, you know the same dude that was a part of the yeah yeah. So 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 his co-defendants was tried as adults and, and sent to prison as teenagers, like mine was. Mm. Uh, Josh should have been tried and sent, sentenced to prison, but he was a white kid. Mm -hmm. The only reason I wasn't tried as an adult is because I was 14, so I didn't meet the certification age. Mm -hmm. But the following year, tech, the state of Texas lowered the certification age where uh, a 14 year old uh, can can be sent to prison. Ultimately, they lowered the age to 10 years old, uh, where a 12 year old can be sentenced to life without parole. So many people don't know uh, up until 2016 that there was only three three countries on, on, on this entire planet that would take a 12 year old kid and sentence them to life without parole. That's America, Sudan and North Korea. Mm. At 12 years old. At 12 years old. Catherine and Curtis Jones is two children out of Florida uh, who was sentenced to life without parole. Uh, Sarah Cruz in life without parole. Uh, man, I can go on and on. George Toker, life without parole. I can go on and on. These were children. Uh, and, and, and still, I, in, still incarcerated there, or, there, or there, have... There's, there's, there, there's, 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 there's like right at 2,000 individuals who have been locked up in, in America since they were children for crime they have committed as children and have life without parole that would die in prison. Mm. As young as 12 years old. Uh, Florida, Florida will take a 12 and 13 year old and send them on a prison yard at 12 and 13. Catherine and Curtis walk in adult prison at 12 and 13 years old, both were brutally raped at 12 and 13 years old in prison in America. So when you, when, what I'm hearing in this particular moment is like prison reform is, is essential, it's real. It's very essential, it's very essential. Uh, there, you have to understand, homie. There was tw there was twenty or thirty years of, of of our country, who 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 believed that that we should be tough on crime. And and they became tough on crime. So not only did they create s sentencing guidelines, that's where the three strikes come in. The mm -hmm. minimum sentencing guidelines came came in that was completely uh unjust and, and unfair, particularly to us. Uh, that's where you start seeing children going to prison at 15 and 16 years old. Uh, when, when we have all the, 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 the evidence, we have all the, the research, we have all the medical and, and science information that says that the human brain don't develop to at or around 25. Mm. So why would you take a 17 year old, a 20 year old, and mm -hmm. sentence them to, to life without parole when they don't even have the full brain development to make the rational decision that you and I would make in certain situations. Uh, if you factor in child trauma, you factor in the abuse, you factor in neglect, uh, that brain may not develop to 30. That's why you hear these old ass niggas like Jay-Z and them hollering 40 is the new 30. That's the lack of brain development for us to even think to process that. 30 is the new 20. Th that's us really saying we're really fucked up. Mm. There's no way the 30 can be the new 20. You have to think backwards. But, uh, but you're taking it out of context. No, I'm not. <laughs> What's in a man's heart come out his mouth. If you say 40 is the new 30, you don't, so that means you're a 40 year old, you still looking 30? No, nah, bro. He what was, are you saying then? He, but uh, I remember uh, that, that song, 30 is the new 20, yeah, I'm so hot, yeah, uh. He's, it is, He's still rapping about dope in his songs and now. That's that song cool, God is. But but you, there, just like a lot of things being taken out of context, it was more or less like, yo, even though I'm older, I'm still able to, you know, live a life that not like a 30-year-old. That's the problem with the black man. He okay. won't grow up. He won't grow up. He mm -hmm. still wanna be 40 and live like he's 30. What's wrong with being 40 and living like you're 40? Mm -hmm. Why you still wanna live younger? The goal is to grow old, not get younger. Mm -hmm. So the goal ain't to keep all my black hair. 
The goal ain't to go and put a whole bunch of pretty white new teeth in my mouth the old I get. I'm going to lose a side tooth. It's okay. I'm the getting old. <laughs> Nigga, I'm going to get a bald spot. It's okay. I ain't got to go get the man weed. What, so that's what's happening, homie. We, what's, we shaming old. So that's why the old niggas saying, oh, look at you old nigga. Because we shame to be old. Mm. So our kids shame the old. Ain't nothing wrong with 40 being 40, my nigga. Yeah. But what got you on to this activism in the community? Uh, because I had people who, who, who poured into me when mm. I was a fool. So, so before I got out the juvenile system, uh, home, I, I wasn't exposed to gangs. Yes, sir. Uh, I grew up in an upper middle class neighborhood with white kids from the third grade. I don't know nothing about the hood shit. Nigga, I used to go to my ain't beating them house and see them nigga with the blue flags. And then I saw that shit on colors on TV. I ain't know what that shit was mm -hmm. until I went into the juvenile system. So when I got into the juvenile system, you see rolling 60 Crips, you see rolling 30 Crips, you got Altadena Block Crips, you got Original Swamp Compton Crips, you got Fire Deuce Hoover Crips, you got GDs, you got uh, Black Gangster Disciples, you got Spanish Gang, so you got all these different gangs. And it ain't no football team. And I'm gonna be here for the next four to seven years. Get in where you fit in. Correct. Because this is the bar sport in here. So nigga, I joined the game. And, and when I got introduced to it, Coming from, a, and I want to say this to all the mamas, coming from a single parent home with just mama in the house, never been spanked by a man, never been disciplined by a man, never had a hug from a man, never been kicked in the ass by the man. When I got introduced to the gang, it was everything I was looking for. Nigga, I got an uncle in the gang. I got a big homie. I got a nigga playing OG mm. just like the daddy. Yeah. I got brothers. I These got are your male figures. That there you, are. you go. And they ain't number two, three years older than me. Yes, sir. It's like the nigga in the ninth grade looking up to the senior. So, it's like the nigga in the eighth mm. grade looking up to the eleventh grader. He like a big, big homie. He like daddy. It's like a nigga in the sixth grade looking up to the nigga just got in college. He's still a kid, too. Mm -hmm. But the sixth grade nigga don't know this. Correct. These the big homies now, nigga. These the daddies. These the uncles. And nigga, I fit right in, and I became the little homie everybody loved. And I worked my way up the rankings, showing out for them niggas. I just want to be accepted, nigga, so I'm going to do what these niggas won't do. I'm the little nigga. I'm the little nigga all the big homies love. So, yeah, nigga. So, uh, but it's people like me that's sitting back coming to work every day looking at this little nigga, reading books. Looking at him, his test scores, seeing he's smart, he got potential. His mama coming to see him. Mm -hmm. He making phone calls, he getting mail, he getting cards, he getting letters. Man, this little boy playing. These other kids ain't getting none of this. So you got workers who sitting back looking at the dynamics of all these kids they work with. And it's their job to say, man, why y'all hanging together? Y'all don't fit together. So it was the workers who were seeing the good in me. I ain't seeing the good in me because I'm playing bad. They seeing past the act. A it's friend. a facade. It's just a facade. I mean, I'm playing. Nigga, I ain't even none of this shit. That's why I'm so easy to quit when I got my senses. So if some niggas get stuck playing that because they don't have no app. You, I'm said, I, you said something, though, and I want you to say it. Uh, nigga, I got an app. I'm smart. Yeah. Nigga, I can, I, I can pass my GED. I can take college courses. Nigga, I can go before the parole board and look at all these white people out and talk. It's a lot of niggas can't. Yeah. So they don't have no app. Nigga, they ain't got no mama sending them scriptures. They ain't got no mama calling, praying with them. They ain't got none of it. So they ain't, I'm hanging with these niggas with no app, but I got an app. Yes, sir. So it was the workers who made me realize, homie, uh, you bullshitting. So well, when it was time for me to go back to court, uh, part of the law is uh, you go, to the, go into the juvenile system until you're 18. Uh, 30 days prior to your 18th birthday, you go back before your sentence and judge. And the sentencing judge will make a determination uh, whether you're going to be transferred to the adult prison system, whether you're paroled or you're recommitted back into the custody of the youth system. Now, if you're recommitted, then that means the juvenile system has jurisdiction over you until you're 21. You get out at 21 and you're free. Your record is sealed. If you go to prison, then you do the remaining of your 12 years. So I'd already done four years at this time on 12. My, my victim's family played a, played a big part in, in me not going to prison uh, because they, they, was a, they was a forgiving white family. Mm. So I could never be angry and hate white people because I took a, a white man's life only for their family to be loving and forgiving. 
I don't, and so it's hard for me to, 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 to develop hate uh, in my heart. I hate things, but I don't hate people. So, uh, so I actually got to look, look at these people and, and hear the words, uh, I forgive you, uh, we forgive you. Not only that, uh, I had a compassionate judge. Uh, my judge is the same judge who, who, who sentenced the, the little white kid, Ethan Couch, to the, to, the four, to the 10 years probation for those four DWI murders. Uh, Judge Jean Boyd. So in, in her defense, uh, many people believe she should have sent that little white kid to prison. Uh, and many people believe she should have sent me to prison because that was a recommendation for the state for me to be transferred to the adult prison system. Remember I told you my mother said not, I, I'm not asking for him to be released. If I would have been released at 18, I would bring it home to gang bang in mine. Mm -hmm. uh, at 21, I brought home the youth advocate mind mm. because in, in those three years, uh, I, I began to work the programs. Uh, hold on, hold on, sit tight real quick. So you say at 18, you went back in front of the judge yeah. for- uh, A transfer hearing to go transfer to Transfer hearing. Your mom had the, the opportunity to either say- I, I would have been paroled home that day. I would have came home and been on parole for three years. Mm -hmm. And, and, and free, and in free. essence, but you had parole. Yeah, I would have been free. I could have, yeah, yeah, at 18 years old. And she said what? They, the judge specifically said, Miss White, are you asking for your son to be released today? Uh, and my mama looked at me and looked at the judge and said, no, Your Honor. Mm. I think he need to go back and work the programs because they were great programs. Uh, it, they was programs that focused on, on, on not just rehabilitation, uh, but re-socialization and, and repairing a, a child uh, from, from the childhood trauma that most children uh, who commit these type of crimes endure. Uh, I hadn't really had no trauma, homie, that I thought at the time, other than the fact that my daddy wasn't there. That alone is trauma. Mm -hmm. That alone is traumatizing. Yes, sir. Uh, on, on top of the fact that your mother is there and she's not there, that's even more traumatizing. On top of the fact that you're having surgeries where you're being put to sleep, which is hindering some brain functions, right? So, uh, so I learned a lot in, in those three years. But there's a fast-growing process from 18 to 21 where a kid can develop and grow uh, at, at such a rate it, it surprises many. Uh, it's not a big difference from 18 to 21, but... If you nurture a, a child and you put a child in the right environment, in, 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 in the right setting, uh, that kid can grow to full potential in three years. And, and that's what happened with me. So, so within three years, so from 18 to, to 21, I went from playing leader of the Rolling 60 game to within two years. Uh, and, and, and this wasn't me fronting. Uh, this, was the, this was the real me. I was fronting as a gang member. Mm -hmm. Uh, this was the real me excelling. Uh, homie, they used to take me off campus. That's where I told you I spoke at Blinn College. I spoke yeah, at yeah, Texas A&M, yeah. Prairie View, every college in around there, UT, uh, the Aggies, uh, all the high schools. So my last year and a half, two years of being locked up, I would go out and do public speakings and motivational speakings at colleges and universities and high schools. So they groomed me for this. It's just that when I got out at, at 21 in 1998, my record was sealed. Uh, no felony convictions, but my identity was tied inside the juvenile system. So I came back out here, nigga, with a murder case that everybody know as a, you know, nigga. So, nigga, we root for the killer. So I come back to my peers who I know from school, nigga. I'm known as a nigga who caught a murder case. Those are accolades, right? So in, in 1998, when I walk out of the juvenile system, all of my childhood issues have been resolved. Like I was pure and innocent, uh, but I didn't know how to talk to girls. Mm. I had been locked up from 14 to 21. Look at that big old gap. You know how much shit go on from 14 to 21? Nigga, I didn't know which way was north, south, east, or west. When I left, if you was cute, you can get a girl. Nigga, when I come home, it's about money. The dope boy nigga, this the dope boy era now. So culturally, gang banging, dying out. So what I'm gonna come out here and do?
Niggas ain't gang banging in '98. Mm -hmm. I'm trying. I kind of really want to gang bang, but I don't know what to do. Gang bang. I had never been introduced to gangs in the free world, so it was easy for me to walk away from this gang mindset. That was just in the juvenile, the past time. So when I come home, homie, uh, you do what most people do, homie. Uh, you go back to the old people, the old places, and the old things. Uh, I tried to work. But nigga, I ain't know how to get up and go to work. Been locked up since I was 14. Y'all don't know how to get up and go to work. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how to wake myself up. I've been getting woke up. When it's time to eat, nigga, I don't know what to eat. I've been looking at the menu. The menu been saying what we go eat. How I know? I, I ain't been, I've been locked up. So there, there, there's nobody you really can talk to because at that time, nigga, Reentry is something big now, but nigga, was reentry was unheard of back then, let alone juvenile reentry. So there was no church, there was no family member that a nigga can talk to and say, man, I'm having some inadequate issues. Nigga, I don't know what to do. So I'm trying to date girls my age, but the girls I'm dating saying stuff like, you need a high school girlfriend. Man, I don't know what the fuck she mean, but my conversation ain't on their level. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Nigga, what do you do? Uh, you go with the culture, right? So what was the culture doing at that time? Selling dope. Master P had just dropped that motherfucking uh, ghetto dope. Man, 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 crack like this, ghetto dope, and taught you how to cook crack from step one to step 10. So I decided to go to college because one, one of the benefits of, 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 of aging out of the juvenile system in the state of Texas is that you become a ward of the state. So once you get adjudicated for a crime, your parents are no longer your parents. You become a ward of the state. Mm -hmm. So meaning you're a, you're a state baby. So one of the benefits of being a ward of the state is uh, they pay for my college tuition up to a PhD. So right now I can go back to college and they still pay for my college tuition. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was one of the things that I tried to do when I first get out, but I, I ain't have nobody to guide me. So I, I went to go enroll at the University of Arkansas in, in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, in the process, I had a cousin who was going to school up there. He was the president of the BSA Black Students Association, and he had a fascination with wanting to be the weed man. So uh, me and him come, come home one day. Uh, he done got the football playing niggas money. Uh, he done went and got 10 pounds of weed. I don't even know how much a pound of weed cost away. I just decided to drive. Get stopped and get pulled over 10 pounds of weed, uh, catch a drug trafficking charge. I hadn't even been out eight months. Mm. After gone, been seven years. 90% uh, of juveniles are rearrested within one year after being released. 85 to 90% of adult inmates are rearrested or back in prison within five years after getting released. Those numbers don't lie. So I fill in those stats. Uh, I ultimately end up getting six months prison boot camp, five year deferred adjudication probation. Uh, in the process of trying to complete those five year deferred adjudication probation, a nigga just trying to find an identity. Mm -hmm. From 21 to 30, the black man, the black boy, he struggled with trying to find an identity. That's why you see him in his 20s and from 19 to 21, he hanging with a certain group of niggas. He trying to find somewhere to fit in. Then he with this group of niggas. He trying to find somewhere to fit in. Then he over here trying to do this. It wasn't until I started having children that I found an identity. Because other than that, nigga done pimp, nigga done sold drugs, nigga done robbed, nigga done done all the things we think we supposed to do on the streets other than rape, child molest, and shoot dope, right? So all the gangster shit we think we supposed to, so nigga go try all that shit, homie, and, and God bless me not to you know, get in no trouble to catch no time. So I hadn't been in no trouble as an adult uh, that'll warrant me to go do uh, a, a bunch of motherfucking time. I, I've been submerged, I, I haven't been a criminal I've been submerged in the criminal elements of our society because of our culture, right? So uh, what do you mean by that? A nigga get a job and have a quarter pound of weed at the warehouse and be selling weed at work mm -hmm. just to have a little extra money for gas? Correct. Uh, a nigga have a homeboy 
who sell weed and got another homeboy who trying to buy some weed and he a middle man, a little drug deal to get him extra $700. So I was submerged in the, in the criminal elements trying to find an identity. But that's all you know too. Uh, well, it wasn't all I know. Uh, because I got it, I'm educated, homie. Yeah. Uh, homie, I can read, I can write, uh, I can do a resume, uh, I can I can go get, get an interview and, and can sell myself in an interview uh, to get a job. Because those are the things I started doing when I was tired of doing wrong. Y you're doing wrong because you think wrong is the right thing to do in the mind state that you're in. Right? We got an element of our culture to tell us doing wrong is right. Uh, you got your parents teaching you what's right and what's wrong. When you do wrong, it don't feel right, even when you try to justify it. And, and so that's, that's where I had gotten in life, homie. Uh, I had a son, and, and, and I knew that uh, I have options. Man, my nigga them got to sell dope because their mama was on crack. They have to do this. I don't. And, and so that's when that light came on, that's where my fear came because I started telling myself that it's only so many, so much mercy that God can give me because I know better. Mm -hmm. I ain't supposed to be doing it. They is. And it, maybe they ain't, but nigga, I know I'm not. So once I was able to gather that concept, uh, I was 25, 26 with a full brain then. Mm -hmm. Now I'm rationalizing uh, because now I have a son. And 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 I want to get this little boy something that I never had, and, and I didn't know nothing about being no good father, no bad father. I don't know shit about that. Cause you didn't have just, that. I just wanted to be a her father. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to be a her father, that he can come in there and pull them eyelids open, right. touch the nose, slob on my face. Mm -hmm. I ain't know nothing, and, and, and I figured he, me and him will figure it out together. So that was my approach. Me and him will figure this out together. Uh, so I, I, I learned when I was becoming an overbearing, uh, mean, frustrated parent, when a little boy asked me, Dad, are you mad about something? I mean, I'm taking some shit out on him and he can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my, yeah, I, I learned through, through the kid to what's a good and, and bad father. Uh, and, and to this day, uh, I've been a day one daddy. Uh, I don't have no unexcused absences. I've been having perfect attendance in fatherhood. <laughs> yeah, I got perfect attendance in fatherhood. I like that. <laughs> hey, how many how many children you got? Bro? I got two by one woman. Okay. So I, I had my son. Uh, I like that. And man. then uh, when, when when she was pregnant with my daughter, uh, I, I didn't want to continue to have children out of wedlock. Uh, so I made a conscious decision. Uh, yeah, to marry to marry, even though we divorced. Uh, but but I wanted to give them something. Uh, I wanted to break the curse, homie. You want more kids? Nah. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I want to be reckless with that dick and just run around and fuck them baby grown now. Yeah, I don't want to be tied down no more. If I make a baby, I want one overseas that I can leave behind. No, man. Don't yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Them overseas baby don't matter. No. Yeah, man, fuck them overseas baby. I'm going to have me some overseas okay, baby, like granddaddy and them did in Japan and Vietnam. You can't do that, man. You can't yeah, I know, say but, that. Yeah, I know I can't, but I think it all the time. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make an outside, But this baby. is, this, 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 like, 90% of this, this video up until this point, you have been... I want to be a sorry motherfucker sometime, homie. It's hard being a good daddy all the time, man. Nigga, I want to be a siren, motherfucker. I want to see at least what it feel like. I at least want to see what it feel I like. Did. You want to feel? You, want, you, you yeah. know what it feel like. You was a part of that. Uh, uh no, no. I know what it feel like not to have. I don't know what it's like to be the one to cause. That's so contradicting. I know, man. But shit, fuck it. Uh, man, I want to section a baby, man. I just see some time and send the child support to her too. Come fuck the mama, high five the baby, play the game, rub him on the head. And then he grew up and make it to the league, and I show back up. You think he gonna show up in the league? Well, who who skill set? The mama or you? The stepdaddy. Cause that's normally who developed them niggas. The stepdaddy. Then taught that nigga how to run them routes. <laughs> go that way. Go that way. <laughs> yeah. Nah, homie. But listen, it's all right to want to be a low down, dirty motherfucker and admit it, but you're not. I re I'm listen. I want to have a baby where I done left behind. Just yeah. 
I want to be, man, I don't, man, I'm, man, shit, yeah, I want to be dirty sometimes. I want to, yeah, I want to be Do you think you got that really in you to do, though? No. Okay. Mm -mm. No, but, but saying uh, it is just something. Uh, it, it, just, it just left out there in the universe to just be, say, I want to be an ain't shit dad. Well, I'm just saying there's a possibility that I may make a baby here in the future with the fame and stardom that I got, mm -hmm. and I may not be able to be there for the baby. This is coming from a person who has seven children and one on the way. Right? Damn. I could never see myself not being a part of my children's life. Me too. This is what I used to say when the first kid. I had my first son. I said, man, mama, I can't see myself loving no other kid the way I love this child. I couldn't imagine, nigga. Then that little girl came. Boy, you love her equally. So I'm saying that. I also said, nigga, as soon as I get a chance to sell out, I'm going to sell out. First chance I got to sell out. I ain't sell out. Sell out what? Uh, your people. Yeah, I had a chance to sell out. It's like, you talking about snitching? No, sell out, be, be, be what they want us to be against black people. Cooning. Cooning, mm. yeah. Yeah, I had a great opportunity to do that. And you don't think you've been doing that? No. Nah. Uh, I take my money and give it to the black people that people don't even know exist. So, is, is, can we keep it funky? Yeah. Like, I'm talking about real funky. This the funky podcast, eh? I swear funky to God. Funky Friday, just keep it funky. Say, Larry, so when I, when I see Charleston White, right, and I know of, of really what you stand for, I respect what you stand for. How it's articulated sometimes is something like, ah, uh, why you got to go all the way over there? For example, this is quote unquote coming out of what you said. Fuck Deion Sanders and his sons for leaving Jackson State. Fuck Nipsey Hussle. Fuck King Vaughn. Fuck Jay-Z. Yeah, fuck them nigga. What, what? That ain't cooning? No. What, what, what enlighten me? Uh, they don't say that nigga say fuck LeBron James. LeBron James get mistreated more than any athlete in the world. I, I ain't saying that for white people. But niggas don't say that. Uh, niggas ain't my kind of niggas. Uh, uh, these niggas go to white people's stadiums and buy popcorn and hot dogs. So you ain't never been to a football game? I, I do, but I ain't paid for it. And I don't buy no hot dogs and popcorn. So what you uh, do? I, I really don't watch sports so, at all. So what's your thing? Uh, strip club, hoes, and, and poor nigga babies. And not fucking they mamas. Like the little league football coaches. See, I'm the nigga in the projects and in the ghetto that give away the toys, make sure the kids get and don't touch their mama's pussies. I ain't like them other niggas. So I can say fuck Dion, cause nigga, I Dion coached in my city before with Prime. Nigga, I know the East Side Falcons used to play, so I know about Dion. Hey, you, that ain't respect worthy for you to uh -uh. say, you know, no, even though. No, 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 that ain't respect worthy. Oh, uh, because 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 what I saw was, and I ain't really saying fuck Dion. I'm telling black people to say fuck Dion because what happened? We and took they our, won't. Well, we took our love and our support to Colorado, and we forgot about all these HBCUs that's winning or losing. We ain't said high five them. We don't know one black coach at HBCU. Okay, now stop. Because, like I said, behind everything that you say has some truth. But to that, I would suggest you say in that statement, I ain't going to say, per se, fuck Dion. But look, let's leave that part out. I'm saying it. That No, but, but what we receive would be like, yo, even though Dion Sanders had to make a professional decision to go chase a bag that Jackson State didn't necessarily have. Let's not forget about the other HBCU coaches that's out there. Let me just say, uh, Dion knew they didn't have a bag when he took that on. It was already an agreement that we know we go struggle. He even agreed to give portions of that to that facility. He already knew this. The white folks just came and do what they always do. Come get the nigga and take the attention that he was gonna bring to the spotlight on the HBCU. Now this big old light that could have been on these HBCU is now on this one white school that's 92% white. So let me ask you this. If you was in Deion Sanders' situation, you would have stayed at Jackson State? No. <laughs> you missing what I'm saying. No, you saying, missing what I'm saying. I ain't saying. saying fuck Deion. Deion done what he was supposed to do okay. as a hub and the coach. I'm saying fuck the hub and the coach. Nigga, we don't rally behind no nigga that'll sell out for the white man's job.
Nigga, go get with the nigga that's still with the niggas. Down there on that field with them holes in it. Like the schools and the shoes that nigga, we always had a Negro League. Stay in the Negro League, my nigga. Why you gonna take our best and our brightest? So you done went and took the best and the brightest players over here for who to benefit? Not your people. And you done took all your people with their fame and their support for who? A, a school that's 92% white and y'all ain't gave a one game, not one game to the black HBCU, not Gramlin, not Pred, not one. No celebrity. So you're going to come over here and rally all the best and the brightest players to come over here on Whitey's porch. And you the bait, sir. You and your son, y'all the bait. No, nah, my nigga, I ain't with that. So I'm saying fuck him and his son. Nigga, why y'all ain't doing this same support for these little league football teams in y'all city that helped them babies get to where Dion is? They don't get that kind of support. They stand on the corners and have the cheerleader little girl looking like hoes dancing, begging for money with buckets. Okay, now, now let me... That's just the little league fundraiser. Let, 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 let's just keep it a buck, all right? Honestly, it's, it, 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 it make me feel a certain type of way when Now, you... I'm going to get to King Von and Nip, but we on, on. Dion right yeah, now. Yeah, we on Dion. It just make me feel a certain type of way because I respect what I respect Dion and what Dion got going on. So it's hard for me to hear you say that in a in a way where I know Dion Sanders' impact in our culture has did way more than anybody else in this in this society that we live in. What impact have Dion had? Other he than brought notoriety to a a space that in essence really wasn't there before. What Denver, Dion. Colorado? He yeah. brought notoriety to Colorado. To Jackson State. He brought notoriety to Jackson State. And then he took it where? To Colorado. Okay. Now, to, to, to make my point, all right? So I'm asking you, Charles the White. <clears throat> you go to a... Matter of fact, can we keep it funky? Mm -hmm. What's the most that you've ever gotten to do or to be Charles the White? Uh, $40,000 for, for a two-day interview. Okay. $40,000. Now, if you could say, I could change that $40,000 to $400,000, would you just leave that $40,000 or would you go get $400,000? I'm gonna go get $400,000. Is that not what Deion Sanders did? Mm -mm. Okay, what did Deion Sanders do? Uh, Deion's son is a star quarterback that he's trying to get to the league and he's fathering his, he's fathering his son to the league with nobody else's children in mind. And he's getting a pretty big check to do it. And what he's doing is he's robbing black people of their star power. He's right. robbing black people of their economics because he done took it and gave it to the white man. Because the, the, ooh, the, ooh. the, the, the space that you speak of, why not, why not send it back there too? Why leave it here? Why the baby? Why Lil Wayne? Why all these major people don't go stand on the sideline of coaches that's not a celebrity? Why they don't do it to people who are not celebrities? Why? <laughs> because this is what I know about black people. They worship and they idolize celebrities. That's why they are worshiping and idolizing Dion. They worship. They worship. They worship and idolize celebrities. And so I'm here to say, fuck them celebrities. From King Von to Nip, because when us regular people need, uh, when we need help, they don't come, they don't step down and come fuck with us. That ain't true. Man, I've been in the community for the last 12 years. Man, I know Dion lived in Prosper, Texas, Dallas, Texas. Dion wasn't never there outside of his prime organization, but football. That, but that's him there, though. I, but that's why I'm saying fuck him, because no, I, I was in the community with him. I, I was at the football game with him. I watched how his arrogance walked past the parents and the kids. I saw how arrogant he was to his people. Mm -hmm. He ain't loving. Man I, done, man, I done fought with the police. I was at every city council meeting. So when the football and celebrity nigga go to talking, I said, man, y'all talking from up here. I'm talking from down here with these people. I'm in the schools. I'm in the juveniles. I'm in the jails. I'm in the prison. I'm standing on stands swearing as a, on murder cases and capital murder cases. Man, y'all talking from up there. It's easy to say fuck y'all. Easy to say fuck Dion so it, it, and his son who driving a Rolls Royce who kid, and these kids down here dropping out of school to go strip and sell pussy because they daddies don't have the money to send them because they can't eat. But he got a Rolls Royce that won't pay the parking fine. Now, keep putting it in their face. Keep showing up, putting them watches in them kids' face. That's why y'all got robbed in UCLA. 
See, that's what I'm talking about. The Bible speaks for the least of those. Those kids up there ain't the least of those. That's why I talk about the poor nigga babies. Okay. So, can we keep it funky? Yes, sir. Charles and White, it sound like you a hater. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm a realist. No, because uh, you're talking about you talking about materialistic things. No, 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 no. Favor ain't fair. I'm, ta I, I, I'm talking so when about, you talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about and, and, socialism and classism. We ain't talking about favor. No, but but, but when you put it in their face, that ain't favor. Because favor is meak, mild, and humble. So you mad that that Shadur no, did, no, 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 did, no. I, did I'm, glad got, got, I'm glad they got I'm glad they got robbed. Cartier, I'm uh, glad they got robbed. I'm, no, yeah, I'm glad he got robbed. No, I'm, glad see, every, I'm, glad, I'm glad every school he went to, he done been robbed. That's cooning. No, it ain't. That's cooning. No, it ain't. Because you bring it, so, see, see, because why I say that's cooning is you turning your story and your beliefs, using your platform to tear down a person who's bringing notoriety to something that wasn't, that wasn't there. Well, they, well, they use their platform to tear down the black school by not giving them the light. But because you, the black school had, this is what I'm saying, black people for the last two years when he was at Jackson State, y'all was HBCU hashtagging. I'm talking about you couldn't get on the internet and not see HBCU hashtag. What happened, y'all? Y'all cooning now. What's the white man with Colorado University? Y'all cooning now? What happened to the HBCU hashtags? That's all I'm saying. What happened? I'm still HBCU hashtagging while I'm cooning. Yes, sir. And I'm still showing up at the HBCU by an HBCU girl mm -hmm. and rocking it on the major platform. I don't see nobody HBCU in it like me. So who cooning? So I'm going to tell you this. You just sit up and told me that you made $40,000 in two days. Mm -hmm. And you also just told me that if you had an opportunity to make $400,000, you would take that. So the fact that... I just, said, I, hold on, hold on. I, I'll let let you me, let me just say, okay. I turned down a $5 million deal with Aiden Ross and Kick to take a half a million dollar deal with niggas. I turned down a $5 million deal with Aiden Ross and Kick to come over here to sign a half a million dollar deal with niggas so I can stay with my people. Mm. Yeah, they say I'm dumb and stupid. Yeah, I turned down five million so I can go sign half a million. So I can stay with these niggas. I ain't want to sell out and go beat up them white folks. Take all my star power over there with Kick and Aiden Roth with them Jews. I wasn't finna do that, my nigga. I stayed with the niggas. Culture TV. Don't even know if they can give me the whole half a million. But nigga, I stayed with my people, my nigga. My spirit wouldn't let me do it. So I don't give a damn what Dion, that Dion taught. Nigga, I sacrificed for it. Yeah, when I told them white folk, I'm not leaving my people, they took back the, 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 the it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a curriculum. And for those that know, it's a curriculum called Thinking for a Change. When Obama implemented the My Brother's Keepers initiative, there's a curriculum that's called Thinking for a Change. It's damn near a $100,000 curriculum. White folk gave it to me. But they said, Charleston, we want you. We don't want your people. I said, if you take me away from my people, you diminish the value of who I am for my people. I'm going to say it again. When you take me away from my people, you diminish the value of who I am for my people. And I refuse to do that. And Dion diminished his value to his people for his people to go over there. You got enough money where you ain't got to do How much money you want? I don't want a hundred million. I don't want a billion. It's that much harder to get in heaven if you believe that word. I don't want a hundred million, my nigga. I want to walk amongst my people. I want to be able to go to the bottom of the least of those. He can't do that. Him know his son, they go rob him. I ain't been robbed yet, and I show up with no security. I done say fuck Nipsey, I done say fuck the Crips, fuck Raymond Washington, I done disrespected everything these niggas done killed for, and I travel with no security. They can't do that up there. Nah. That don't mean you ain't been looking over your shoulder. Pepper I ain't spraying. been looking over my shoulder. I just, went to sleep. I just went to sleep in the barber shop and got hit in the head with the pistol in the hood. It's Viron in there. I didn't look over my shoulder in the hood. I went to sleep. I ain't looking over my shoulder. I went to sleep in the barber shop trail. Nigga come hit me, a killer. I didn't look over my shoulder. Nigga, I went to sleep. Go I go, it's pictures of me sleeping in a strip club like this. Sir. I ain't looking over my shoulder. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. I speak against evil. Okay, let me ask you this. So you think if Deion Sanders goes sitting in that barber chair, you think he going to get hit with a pistol without no security? He going to get robbed and hit. No. You lying to me? No. You lying. He getting robbed right now. 
That's cap. Him and his son getting robbed right now. He got robbed in Jacksonville. But see, Dion, Dion coached football. I address killers in the neighborhood. I address the niggas who kill in our communities. Dion don't. Mm-hmm. I address the gang bangers who but, do wrong. But you just got pistol whipped though. No, I didn't get pistol whipped. I got hit. What's the difference? Uh, a hit and pistol whip is a different thing, nigga. You got hit. I with got the hit pistol? in the head and jumped up, nigga, and I ain't get hit no more. Cause I know what to do when a nigga hit me. I ain't get hit no more. What you do? Nigga, I went to work. Oh, y'all was fighting. I went to work. That's it. I went to work. What that mean? Oh, uh, I ain't get hit no more. So you do it. This this ain't even been a week. Yeah, but y'all was fighting. I got hit sleep. And then y'all, you how got. On, listen, how I'm on fight, get hit sleep, and a nigga hit. I'm dazed when a nigga hit me, so I ain't no fight. Nigga, I went to grabbing. So you got hit and y'all got the. I went to sc- grabbing shit. I went. We the nigga didn't touch me no more. I went to grabbing shit. Nigga, you don't hit me no more. But did you hit him back? Mm mm. Like, how I'm gonna hit? I'm dazed. If the nigga hit you with a pistol sleep, how are you gonna wake up? Nigga, you dazed. He got you, I'm sleep like this, you. So this is, this is what I'm telling you. I wake up, nigga, and grab the closest thing I could as a weapon till I can come to, and it ended. So, so this is what I'm saying. Dion coach football. I address killers. I say fuck King Von, Nipsey, Rolling Sixty, and if you kill in my community, I'm gonna say you did it, nigga. You don't get to ride around here and holler no snitching. Who did that killing? I'm the nigga come out and say they shot that baby. And you bitch ass nigga better turn y'all self in, nigga. And we ready to go to war with that. See, Dion don't do who that. Who is when you say we? Who is me? That? And I got some niggas go go to war. Okay. Now I got some niggas go go to war, homie. See this. See this is the thing, Charleston. Like I, I think everything that you're saying has some truth to it. It's just the the delivery. You oh. standing. There's no denying that you're standing for and by your people. Well, here's the thing. Uh, when you're addressing evil, you can't worry about the delivery. When you're looking at the conditions of our community, you can't worry about the evil. When you got kids that kill kids and say we smoking on tuka. See, they wasn't worried about the delivery when these kids in Chicago were talking about smoking on tuka. Mm-hmm. They weren't worried about the delivery. I ain't got no manners for no slut. I'm going to put my thumb in her butt. The delivery? I like girls kissing girls where I'm from. And that's on the radio. Girls on girls. That's, they, that's promoting lesbianism to my daughter as we driving to school. This song they playing with Drake. Y'all worried about the delivery? These niggas talking about killing each other. And they really, that nigga thug said, nigga, I shot at your mama. You don't mention me no more. He really shot that nigga mama. And y'all worried about my delivery? These niggas are confessing to murders on songs. And y'all worried about my delivery? The conditions of black sucking them, talking about booty hole. Y'all worried about my delivery? Come on, don't be hypocrites, black people. Y'all can't listen to this music if y'all so caught up in my delivery. Don't do me like that. And the way y'all snap and pop y'all pussy to this music, the way y'all kill and drill to this music, don't trip about my delivery. Hey, yo, easy. Why you wear your pants like that? I wear my pants like that because that's easy access, baby. Easy. Why you talk like that? I talk like that to get my point across. Because when I wasn't talking like that, wearing a bow tie, y'all wasn't paying me no attention. And I was going to the Supreme Court changing laws and legislations in this country. I was working with over 50 U.S. congressional members from Ted Cruz to Mark Rubio, Senator John Cornyn. I was on the front page of the American Bar Association Journal. I had done a study with News 21, Walter Conkright School of Journalism. Y'all wasn't paying attention then. So, nigga, I gave y'all what y'all want. A ignorant motherfucking nigga that talk like them rappers. Now y'all listening. Now y'all paying attention, huh? I got y'all attention, checkmate. Now let me tell y'all what y'all need to hear. We fucked up as a race of people since y'all so caught up into my delivery. 5% of children now are catching HIV from ages 13 to 21. What y'all worried about? 85% of the new chlamydia, all the new cases of teenagers. What y'all so caught up about? Nigga, only 35% of most kids in inner cities can read on or above their grade letter. What the fuck are y'all talking about and these kids can't read? Come on, my nigga. So we gonna be real, let's be real. Uh, I'm not bashing the black woman in her BBLs. I'm not bashing the, the black woman because she wearing eyelashes. I'm not fucking with the sister because she got too many baby daddies. I'm addressing men. 
boys and men, from Deion Sanders and his son to black people following a court like man, but won't support local. How can black people give all this energy to one man and all these other black coaches from high school to college? Why is it just this one man? And we abandon hashtag HBCUs, just like we abandon no justice, no peace for George Floyd. Are we still mad about George Floyd? Are we still mad about police shooting? Is that why we not kneeling no more? Are we still boycotting the NFL? What happened to all these things? What happened? Nigga, because I'm still stuck on Tamir Rice while y'all stuck on my delivery. I'm still mad why ain't now motherfucker tore up the country behind Tamir Rice. Baby Tamir Rice at that. Since we so in tune. See, I know a kid by the name of Dacian Steptoe who killed a high-ranking police officer by the name of Officer Garrett Hull. They called him Rambo. After he killed Officer Garrett Hull, rather than them taking Dacian Steptoe to jail, they executed him on the spot. Broke his arm in two. So I'm saying to myself, man, why, why are these people so caught up on my delivery when all these police shoot? Nigga, ain't nobody died for nothing yet. See, nigga, I done put my life on the line to die for a family who the police was threatening. I ain't see now nigga on the front line. So when I see celebrity niggas from football players to basketball players to rapping niggas, I say, man, them niggas can't talk to me, homie, the kind of work I done put in. Them niggas ain't got no business saying a motherfucking thing to me. Nigga, I really been feeding the community. Nigga, if you go to my city, nigga, if I talk to male, listen, these niggas just be talking. So now, nigga, I really get offended. That's why I say fuck Dion. That nigga lived in Dallas, Fort Worth for over 20 years. That nigga ain't known for doing nothing in the community, my nigga. Nothing. Fuck his son has been favored to get to drive a Rolls Royce, nigga, when half the kids can't even pay college tuition where we from, let alone drive a Rolls Royce and not pay parking fee. Robbing, my nigga, that's what we're doing anyway to our rich cousins. If we go be real, the poor black and the rich black don't get along, so let's play like we don't. If the rich Dion come down there, he go get robbed and hit upside his head, too. Them niggas will rob their mamas down there. Let's just be real, homie. But I ain't left them people. I still go back to get my hair cut with them. I still pass out turkeys. I still give them Christmas toys. When they call to get their kids out of trouble, I'm still there. I ain't left them yet with my stardom. Dion left. I ain't showed up in a bunch of kids' life and promised them that we go grow together. And my first chance I got, nigga, I left them and took the money. You know what I just did? I just left this whole group of kids right here with some more abandonment issues because they were seeing me as a father figure. Y'all just see him as a coach. They were seeing a daddy, a father, just the presence of that man. Just the presence of that man in them boys' life, homie. And you take that from them? You take that from them? You take the limelight from them, you take all that from them, you strip them from that, and now they back in the dark? They back in the dark? Shh, come on, my nigga, I re I'm starting to resent black people. Uh-uh, don't do that. Nigga, next year I'm gonna be hollering fuck black people, uh -uh. cause they the most hypocritical, nice. fakest motherfucking people in the world. Cause they, if any motherfucker mad about what I'm saying and can like Lil Durk, can, can listen to King, nigga Nipsey Hussle say, I'm gonna turn all these bitches into lesbians. I started not liking that nigga when I heard him say that. Nigga, you'll turn all the hoes into lesbians? He said, I'm going to turn all these bitches into lesbians. Nigga, not my black queens. Maybe you ain't got no black mama. I got a black mama, nigga. But hold on. You just told me that you wanted to doggone have an exotic baby in another foreign country. I don't give a damn what's in another country. Them ain't my people. But you're going to leave them. That but, ain't you my just... but that ain't my people. But hold on, hold on. I you, will you... make a white baby and leave that white baby. That ain't my baby. But you're saying something that you, and you admitted that you wouldn't do. No, but I would want to do it. But you don't do it. That don't mean you will do it, though. But listen, no, I won't do it. Okay, but I so these do it. people are speaking about or having the ability to have freedom of speech. That don't mean that they want to do it. Well, people like me for what I people dislike me for what I say. I can dislike Come them on. for what they say. Come on, now. it's no difference. Okay, so let me ask you this though. Let me ask you this. I'm um, no fan of these entertainers. Period. Point blank. Who? Okay. Fine, and, and you can feel the way you feel. I'm not here to sit up here and try to put my hands on you, to pistol whip you, or spray you. Now, look, answer me this. With your feelings how you feel, who's doing it the right way that you can say, okay, I fuck with him for doing that? Uh, nobody, uh, because I ain't watching them. I ain't paying attention to what no nigga doing. Niggas is watching me worried about what I'm saying. I'm still doing what I'm doing. 
Niggas is hearing me say shit and caught up into what I'm saying. Nigga, I ain't watching no nigga to know who, what they doing. Mm. I just know I'm doing it right. And I've been consistently doing it. And that's the key, consistency. Since a lot of niggas start, but they don't keep doing. I ain't stopped. I ain't every city I go to, whether I'm doing a comedy show or anything, nigga, I make it my business to go to the community to give money directly to poor people. I make it my business. Every city. So I hear a lot of people talking, and I'm saying, well, shit, nigga, I got, I, and I ain't, I, I ain't been doing this rich. I just got rich. Nigga, I was doing this poor, with no car, in the rain, feeling shame, feeling less than, because I understand it's obedience over sacrifice. See, it's a lot of people make sacrifices to help other people. I'm operating out of obedience. I do it even when I don't feel like it. I do it even when I think I hate something. Man, I hate these niggas, God. I still go do it. Because it's obedience at this point. But I'm a natural man. I don't like Dion. I don't like his son. I don't like them niggas. I don't like them rap niggas, homie. Because from my standpoint, I fight white people. I've been bucking the system. I've been, I killed the white man, homie. I've been doing things the white. But so, you didn't kill it. You but I led, I led the charge. Yes, sir. Okay. And, 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 the, and the newspaper described me as the smallest of the bunch, but the brains of the bunch. I put the gun in his hand. I, I'm the dictator. But it, it, it still don't matter. It's a Listen, different. Listen, uh, uh, Larry, Larry Hoover didn't kill nobody, but he's in there for all them murders because he said, go do it. I'm the dictator. Nigga, if I say do it, he get done. The little bitty nigga with the big mile. If I say do it, it get done. I've been like that since I was a little bitty boy. I'm the general. Nigga, I ain't this brazen online and ain't this brazen. I'm a general in real life, homie. If I got a problem, the whole city want to know what I'm mad about. But I ain't brought home to my people. I ain't sold dope in the black community. I went across the railroad track because I was trained. I was trained, not taught. I was trained by the old niggas. You go cross that railroad track, nigga, and do something to them. You don't do it, hurl. I ain't shot no gun at no nigga. I ain't had no fight with no nigga and kicked him in his face. I ain't done my people bad. All my crimes have been predicated across the railroad tracks. All of them. So I'm a different kind of nigga with a different kind of spirit. So I reign supreme over certain kind of niggas that want to talk to me that's been hurt niggas all their life. All my crime been across the railroad track, and I take pride in that. See, most niggas don't know what it's like to stand over a white man and watch him die and look him in his face and watch him take all his last breath. Nigga, that's a picture in a vivid. I can't get out of my mind. So every time I get mad at white folks, that picture come up. Every time I get mad at white people, nigga. So can't no nigga talk to me. Dion, the nigga better keep playing football, nigga. We've been snatching white folk purses, breaking into white people houses, beating up old white people because they won't let the purse go. Doing white girls bad in the name of doing them bad. Nah, homie, we've been vicious to white so, folk. So. And then I don't speak with this to try to boast and brag, but that's the side of me that rides when my people got a problem with what I say and overlook what I do because I'm watching what y'all do and listening to what y'all say and y'all just as hypocritical as y'all think I am. Mm. So you couldn't find yourself to find nothing good to say about Deion. Nothing. Oh. I've been, the man been in my city for 20 years, brother. Have you ever met him? I've met him. I've actually talked to him after he got his toe amputated. Yeah, I met him. And did you say anything? Did you say fuck Dion in front of Dion? Uh, uh, he, he, he was still at Jackson State then. Did you so say fuck him then, though? Uh, it, it wasn't no reason to say fuck him. Did you say fuck King Von in the presence of King Von people? Uh, yeah. Yeah. When I you did uh, that? Uh, it, it's on camera. What's the boy named 600 Breezy? We stood toe to toe, 600 Breezy, in his face. You go quit, I ain't gonna quit disrespecting nothing about King Von, nigga, in his face. And went to Chicago and did an interview around the corner on DJU from O Block. You went to O Block? I went around the corner at DJU. No, 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 no. no, no I went, listen, on, we, we rolled King through Block. O Block. However, we got there, I don't know nothing about Chicago. But nigga, we went around the corner from O Block so, yeah, to yeah, DJU. Yeah. DJU was a DJ, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Ain't DJU a DJ? Mm -hmm. You lying to me? Mm -hmm. And they wanted to kill that nigga for not letting him back me around the corner from O Block. Let me tell you something. 
you was probably on P block. I don't know what block I was C on. C block. I don't know what block we was but on. You but, wasn't on but, no but, O block. I don't know what block we was on, but we wasn't too far from whatever block nah, they say you man, can't you go could on. You could be at the airport talking about we weren't too far. No, 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 no. Let's keep it funky, Charles. So come on uh, now. Well, let me just say this. They got the interview to prove it. So that's all I'm gonna say. Wherever DJ U Studio is, everybody know where it's at, nigga. They got the interview to prove it. But to the to the viewer that sees this. You ain't say no fuck Deion Sanders why you was talking to Deion Sanders. Oh, uh, it wasn't no when Deion was getting his toe amputated, it wasn't no reason to say fuck Deion. So why would I just So I if Deion say, Sanders were to come in here, you I gonna, tell Deion, nigga, fuck Deion Sanders. And what nigga. you expect Deion Sanders? I don't though. give a fuck what he gonna do. I'm ready to respond to whatever. Nigga, you think I'm talking like this and I ain't ready to respond? Okay, so so let's flip it. All right, cool. Yeah, let's, you think, hold on, hold on, hold on. You think I'm running around being this disrespectful and I ain't ready to respond. Mm. So what if somebody were to say, man, fuck Charleston White? I hear it all the time. Or oh, sticks and stones may break my bone, but words will never hurt me. You better not put your motherfucking hands on me. And if they were to do. Oh, will you, jail or hell is the only option. Who go, you gonna do that? Jail or hell. You gonna put it, you gonna take uh, uh, I ain't never, I ain't never been beat up real bad. And nigga, I talk a lot of shit. And I've been talking this all my life. Man, you remind me of my cousin. I've been talking this shit all my life. And I, and, and nigga, when I was in the institution, a nigga better not touch me. And I can squabble. You can fight. And I'm dangerous. You can fight. And I'm dangerous. But can you fight? Though? And I'm dangerous. You can I'm, shoot a pistol. You can uh, shoot no, a no, gun, no. but can I'm you fight? I'm telling you, I spent seven years locked up, homie, and as much shit I talk, you ain't found one nigga that's been in all them Texas prisons to come out and say, nah, man, we used to beat that nigga up. But you good with words. You can, you can no, talk no, no, your no, way out no, of no, ass no. whooping now, Charles. No, 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 no. They'll pay a nigga $20,000 to say he whooped me. Just think, all this noise I've been talking for the last five years, I'm telling you, I grew up in an institution with murderers. Okay. It ain't one, and all these niggas online giving interviews. Mm. It ain't one nigga. I can pull up an interview right now, and the nigga say, nah, man, that nigga a monster. A monster? Charleston White, what's your whole name? Uh, Charleston White. What's your middle name? You, Jamon. Jamon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Yeah, I use weapons. See, most, see, I don't fight fair. See, most niggas is a, a prize fighters. I'm a surprise fighter. <laughs> yeah, most niggas prize fighting. I'm surprised fighting like a motherfucker. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a yeah. good one right there. Nah, nigga, I'm a weapon user motherfucker. <laughs> that's a good one. Hey, that's a good one. That so, uh, <laughs> nigga, I just travel around the country with weapons. Uh, yeah, that's all I do, travel around the country with weapons, uh, saying I wish a motherfucker would, and I ain't the baddest. Oh, uh, I just know I ain't done nothing to nobody. And all my life, nigga, I ain't done nothing to nobody. But I, 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 just, I just keep it a buck with King you. King Von killed people, homie, y'all love him. So that's what I'm saying, nigga, y'all worship King Von, mm -hmm. and we have documentation that he have killed women and children and people. But he's I admired. So he got what he got. I ain't never killed nobody. I ain't never robbed and shot nobody black. So why would any bad come to me for what I say? Karma don't come for what you say. Do you think, do you think this is a, this is you, this is like the persona or like you act, like this is the stage, Charleston White. This ain't Jamon White. You feel uh, me? no, no, this, 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 this Charleston on, on, on the stage that, that he want the world to see. Okay, but what's uh, the, what's the daddy like? Tell me that. Uh, yeah, he the fool too. Uh, yeah, I'm the nigga. To, I'm the nigga that, that that go to the school when I enroll the kids in school and play like he the dumb daddy who who can't read. So I get a school a hard time. I'm the I nigga. I talk my son into dropping out. So I'm crazy in real life. Man, I talk my son into dropping out of school in the eighth grade. He dropped out because I think school is for dumb people. I think everybody with an education is dumb. So he don't got. He, he never graduated. Well, my mama talked him into going back, but I talked him into dropping out. I said, man, you can hang with me and be a dumb mechanic. I'm going to let you go up here and work at my partner mechanic shop. He just got tired of doing nothing and wanted to go back to school. And when he went back to school, I told the school, I don't give a damn if the boy can do good. But I psychologically do that so they push him through and feel sorry for him. When he, if, yeah, nigga, I, I do the, nigga, I teach my son that ignorance prevails, so I play ignorant in real life in front of my kids. We ain't lost yet. The ignorant nigga fool ain't, ain't failed me yet. <laughs> During the coronavirus, I played like I couldn't read, so I ain't have to do certain things, because guess what? They don't want to read it to me. I play like the dumb nigga. They call it Jeffin. They call it Jeffin where I'm from. Cunning. 
I play like the dumb nigga. I can't read and write. So I learned they give my kids a little favor. They kind of feel sorry for the dumb kids because his daddy ignorant. So they push him on through. What they got a saying that say, uh, sometimes you got to play the fool to the fool to make the fool think that they, that you the fool, but really, they the fool. That's what I've been doing. So, so you basically saying this all, oh, this a front. Yeah. Oh, so you really don't mean like, fuck Dion. that's just- Yeah, I really, I really mean that. <laughs> I really mean that from, you don't want me to mean it, but nigga, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, but this, this- But, but, because, but, but see what you- over, I, this, But this see is, what you overlooking is, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a young man that can relate to those kids who may have be, be having abandonment issues because Dion- That's at Jackson up. State. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you got to understand, nigga, I'm looking at this. Y'all looking at it from a we love Dion standpoint. I'm that guy that say, I love Dion. I'm Everything the nigga. I'm them for. kids. I'm and, I, them, and I'm not mad that he went to go chase that bag. I'm them kids. But he did listen, his service to Jackson State and I'm, still I'm doing not, the service listen, to the culture see, of black but, but, people. But see, y'all, it, but see, this is what I'm telling black but, people. But you, 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 you just named three components. You said the culture. Mm -hmm. You said Jackson State. Yes, but you never said those boys. See, that's what y'all. The players. The players, those boys. That he left. That he left. Okay. So you speaking on their behalf. I'm looking from their perspective. If you okay. think they ain't saying fuck that nigga and his son, you come on now. The privileged son get to go with his daddy. The football coach who get to coach his son. We done seen that at every level. It's called nepotism. You go take the people you like with you. You go take our best players with you because you know they got a better jersey. So it's some kids, nigga, walking around. They're going to be resentful. They're going to have content in their heart. Y'all forgetting about the kids. But this is what I'm... But there I'm, go the butts. It's all about Dion, though. It's and I, all, I'm trying, all I'm trying to say, homie, I'm looking at it... Y'all looking at it from the top down. I'm looking at it from the bottom up. And most people at the bottom is saying, fuck y'all at the top. And you know where I learned this from? Taking poor children to events. 601 tickets used to donate tickets to my organization. I take the kids to the WWE. We got some good seats. Boy, them kids seeing them other kids get to go down to that ring and touch the wrestler. Boy, a little nigga holler out, oh, I hate y'all. Hey, nigga, what's wrong with you? Man, they get to be down there. If you think them kids ain't saying that about Dion and this boy, that's where the resentment is coming from. The new recruits at UCLA want to steal. We feeling left out. We feeling abandoned. We feeling rejected. Nigga, we had access at a man like a father figure. The, 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 the discipline that he brought into the locker room, the, the structure that he brought to the environment. Well, that's gone now, man. What we go, homie? So, so, let so me ask I'm you looking at it from their point of view. Point, point taken, but let me ask you this. If you could talk to Dion, and Dion probably will see this. Uh, there's well enough worthy clips for this. Well, yeah, his wife, the uh, P. P. Law, and all of them done spoke out. He, he, he done looked. Yeah, he, he listened. So, he if you could advise Dion to do something, what would it be? I wouldn't advise my motherfucking thing. See, that's that's hypocritical. I ain't got no advice for no nigga. I speak with children. I got an organization called Helping Young People Excel. Hyped about hype youth. Outreach. Hype is an acronym for helping young people excel. I don't waste my time talking to grown folk. I try to talk down on this level right here. I say, look at young brother. I ain't got shit to say to Dion. I got to talk to these baby. They need my words. That nigga don't need my words. He got y'all clapping for him. Them boys need our words. I want, I want y'all to come talk to these boys with me. Come bring y'all light and come ask them how they feel about Dion. Because they saying fuck him too. Why ain't nobody went back to Jackson State and talked to them people? How do y'all feel about this? What's the name of your new quarterback? Who's the new coach that took over? We don't know. Okay. Can I don't give you an give example? A fuck. Can I give you an example? Yes, sir. So, probably, let's take a young man who probably had his biggest impact or a large impact incarcerated. Juvenile detention, right? So, Let's say, for instance, his sentence gets shortened because of good behavior or favor from the judge or whatever the hell that you may have. That person gets awarded to a, light, a lighter sentence and is able to leave or get out. You don't want that person to get out? You want him to just stay there? Yeah. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Eric Brown. 
He's one of those kids that I talk about that had juvenile life without parole. He was sentenced to life without parole plus an additional 30-something years to die in prison when he was 16 for a crime he didn't commit. There was another guy by the name of George Toker. George was also another 16-year-old who was serving life without parole for, for murder he didn't commit. And he had been in there 30-something years. George is the guy you just described. George took the out. But by George taking the out, it keeps all those other 2,000 guys life without parole in. Eric Brown didn't take the out. Eric Brown is being a sacrificial lamb. He's out on the appeal. But he did almost 30-something years too, homie. But nigga, it's a chance that he can be found guilty and put back in there on his crime. But nigga, he making a sacrifice for the others that's coming behind him. So I would ask that that one person, homie, make the sacrifice for the others that's coming behind you. Somebody gotta do it. Somebody in the family, homie, gotta make the sacrifice. Gotta be that lamb and say, man, I'm finna do it different. I'm making a sacrifice to make this. Somebody gotta do it. Dion could have been that one. You wanted Dion to sacrifice? Uh, for us, mm. uh, I, I did. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I did, homie. Uh, I, I, I was selected to campaign with Donald Trump uh, to go to three key battleground states. Uh, I did trainings for the United States Department of Homeland Security and Human Trafficking Division, North Texas Crime Commission, Eastfield Police Training Academy. Uh, I trained a state's juvenile correction officer. Yeah, I sacrificed a lot for my people. Only to realize, nigga, I don't like my people. I'm trying to connect with my kind. See, there's a whole, there's a whole species of birds. Those are my people. But my kind is you got red birds and blue birds, and red birds and blue birds don't fly together. I'm looking for my kind amongst my people. So I don't give a fuck about my people. I'm looking for my kind. How do you identify your kind? By their actions. And ain't no way my kind would have went to that 92% white school and changed them around to make billions in less than one year and we don't get nothing. I'm the only one to benefit. Everybody around me eating. Everybody around me got a YouTube channel. Everybody around me is benefiting off me being here. It ain't just me. And I can leave everybody and be the only one benefiting. And they got sacrifice. At this point, it's complete obedience. Because at some point, obedience got to kick in. I'm doing it because I'm called to do it. So you talk this Jesus talk. You talk, homie, uh, uh, if you're leaving for the money, then what's the, what about the purpose? Because even though I'm getting money, uh, I've never abandoned my purpose of working with children, working with youth. That's why my conversation is, fuck them, nigga. That's what the key is saying. But in the Bible, you, you quoted it. It was in Samuel, it said obedience is better than sacrifice. So if he's being obedient to the word rather than sacrificing himself, he can impact more by using their platform. I don't see how. You don't think that? Mm -mm. Uh, well, because it's about money. It's not about people and purpose. It's about his son. He already said that the, he, would, he would coach at the Atlanta Falcons if the Falcons grid his son. So it's about his son, and I get that. Let's not make it about, this is about these black kids. Now it's about his boy. The mother just fall under the umbrella, if we go be honest. Mm. And that's okay. But I'm telling black people, what happened to the cause? How did we abandon the cause for one person's success? Look, Cam want me to tell y'all what I really feel. Now I know I'm gonna bring my real motherfucking fit into the internet. So here we go. All right? I'm a... Most people relate to their upbringing, their environment, their background. How you were raised and where you were raised kind of, it, it's a big part of, of who you are and how you engage the world. So naturally, I'm going to sympathize with, with the players who may feel abandoned by their father figure coach, right? So... I share that abandonment that these kids may feel uh, because I don't put myself, I don't play football, right? So I can't put myself in the shoes of a football player. I can put myself in the shoes of a man who would choose to take a better job to take care of his family or to take a job to advance his son's career. 
on the flip side of that, you got a bunch of kids that feel abandoned. Uh, I got a couple of them in my phone. Uh, you, got a, you got a few coaches uh, that feel neglected. Uh, you got some staff members uh, that felt wronged. Uh, I, I look from, 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 from their position. Uh, the abandonment issues, uh, the kids who had hopes, who had just transferred to their school, who probably wasn't as good as the ones who could start on the football team, what was there because of his leadership and his guidance. And you abruptly take that from them. Nobody's talking about that. Uh, not, only, not only do you abruptly take that from them, they are now pushed back into non-existence. They don't exist no more. They back in darkness. Uh, when you do the 60 minute special, and I hate to repeat this, but I'm gonna repeat it. Uh, there were many people in, in Jacksonville who was offended by, by the special because they only show one element. Uh, the poor bad side of Jacksonville and there's a vibrant side of it. So to take, I'm not really mad at Dion, homie. Uh, I'm saying. So you can, so you can, you can see where he coming from, like. Uh, no, I can't. Because I'm telling you, homie, I wouldn't okay. have done it. Okay, that's cool. But because, because can, you, I'm can already, you see where he at though? From no, the top. I don't. I, well, he's not on top because <sighs> because because now because now he's in question. They're already saying that he's not. So so you're already looking at the critics. He's on top in black people's eyes, but he's ain't on. He's he's not on in top in the alumni's eyes. He's not on on top in the eyes of the sports critics. He just had to fire his his offensive coordinator. So he's not on top in our eyes. He don't have a 50-50 winning season. Black people are the only ones saying, well, they won one game last year. They wasn't even expected to. Man, everybody's expected to win, even when you come from losing. But hold on. That's let, what let, you, that's let, what you speed and now. That, now you're talking my language uh, uh, because now you're talking about he's already superseded expectations in Colorado. Well, two, two more games, right? That's fine. It so, don't matter so, if it was so, a half a game. So you let can't me, minimize so let me just say, so let me So let's fuck the games, homie. Look how much money this white school done benefit from all this black support. They couldn't get this from their white support. They couldn't get this from them. We came and made them people from buying tickets from $462 for the whole season to nigga just one seat costing this. The only way we get free is economics, not by jobs. So imagine what we could have done had we kept this in the Negro League. What happened to the Negro League, brothers? Our best and our brightest is going to keep going over there. Every time we build something good, they're going to keep buying it out, BET. Every time we build something good, they're going to keep destroying it, Black Wall Street. They're going to keep taking it from us. I'm going to give you an example. And we, we good, right? Uh, I heard this from a uh, black-owned apparel company by the name of Actively Black, Lenny Smith, right? Uh, I was out with him and his his uh, lady, and he shared this story about one of his mentors who, is an, who was an investor uh, in Actively Black. He said, well, I asked him, I said, yo, would you ever sell Actively Black to like a, a juggernaut apparel company, Nike, Puma, Adidas, XYZ? He said, you know what, I never will. But I'm gonna tell you a story that I asked a person who sold his company to a Caucasian person and got a lump sum, a billion dollars, right? And he asked him, he said, yo, why did you do that? The man responded and said, I did that because that capital that I got with that money, I was able to impact my community with that to give more entrepreneurs that look like me opportunity with the money that the white man gave me. So when you're, when you're trying to raise capital, it's not necessarily, you don't have to sell your company. You can go to a person who looks like you that has the same green dollars, blue dollars, yen, currency, and you can still consider yourself a minority or a black company. So when you see a person like Deion Sanders doing these certain type of things, 
You want him to sacrifice? Okay, cool. But he's opening opportunities for black people to be able to have opportunity in ways that we never have had. Now, to your point, now, this is trickling over into what I know for a fact, right? With Deion Sanders being who and, and, and being as impactful as he is, right? Now, the white man is saying, hey, we need that type of impact. I seen an I seen a, uh, advertisement commercial with uh, Colorado watching their games. And you know how they do, you know, like the in the science labs on campus and all this and all that. And the tagline was, that's prime. That's prime. Oh, boom. The, 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 the student said, that's prime. Boom. That's, you may have seen it, too. And I was saying to that as a way to say, OK, now these universities are saying to them, to themselves, like, yo, maybe we do need to hire more African-Americans because, hold on, stay with me. When you look in the NFL, there's not a lot of minority head coaches, okay? Up under a head coach, you got coordinators. There's not a lot of minority defensive or offensive coordinators. Or let's look higher than a head coach. Mm. There's not a lot of minority GMs. Mm. Or let's look higher than a GM. There's not a lot of minority owners. Mm. But what Dion has been able to do with saying, hey, his impact has been good for business. So therefore, with his impact being good for business, potentially there could be another minority that can come behind him and make an even greater impact because of the likes of Dion Sanders. White people know black coaches won't lead them to being no great uh, winning teams. White people know that. Uh, you ain't gonna get no Bill Belichick out of Dion. You ain't gonna get no motherfucking me Pat Riley out no. Out, you ain't gonna get it. This is what I know. So you can't get so so. No, nah, black so, coaches. No, nah, black coaches can't so coach. So no. what if I were to tell you Tony Dungy? He ain't uh, no good coach. No, nah, he wasn't no good coach. Oh, cap, boy, you. Nah. Now you talk talking out the side of your neck. Oh, uh, <gasps> how many championships he won? He won a championship. How many? It don't matter. He How won. many? He won one. Bill Belichick won many. But you, you, like got, you compare. You got, you well, compare. you got. Well, well, you got. You got. You got. You got a Phil Jackson and 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 you got a what's the little short nigga played for the played for the San Antonio Spurs? Uh, uh, Avery Avery Johnson. So you got a Avery Johnson and you got a Phil Jackson. Avery won one. Give me Phil that won many. Yeah, but he had tenure though. Well, let me just over say over time. That. Let, let me just say this. Because because uh, I just made white my... white white people. Long as we've been in this country, white people are not looking at one black person and saying maybe we should hire more black person because this one black person done good. And let's just be real, America's not doing that. America's not doing that. Long as we've been here proving ourselves as coaches, as athletes, there's not one black person that can go get a job and convince white people that we need to hire more black people. It's always a token nigga. He's a token nigga. He's a token nigga that played football for white folks. We always been patted on the ass and tapped on the head, boy. They wouldn't give him a chance. He wanted to coach at Florida. State. Black folks gave him a chance mm. to prove that he can do it. Why leave us to go over here with these white folks? You already knew we were having money problem, big dog. That ain't no. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. So why so why why did he have why didn't he get the rest of his money for his contract then? But you can't say that though. Well, let me like, okay, well, let me say this then. Let me say this. Why did black people follow him? Why didn't black people stay with Jackson State? That's be, all I want to know. Because obviously he left. Okay then. So we left HBCUs to go join the white universities. We took our support, and not only did we take our support, we took our dollars. We did the same thing when they said, hey, y'all, we gonna take the signs down. Let them niggas come over here and eat so we can shut them, shut them places down. It's the same trick. Integration. Hey, come on, Dion, come integrate with us. We stripped you of your powers. So what star power do you have for HBCUs now that can what? at least, hold on, let me see, that can, homie, did you saw the first couple games? 
the star power that was on those sidelines. So now since you think that he can do more because he can recruit more black students, well, how many black students can he get on that football team at that 92% white school? How? What, how much change can he do with how many 12 players? He may get 20. He can't make an all-black team. Bullshit. We see it all the time. Okay, when he do that, then alumni going to be pretty upset because they got some white kids in Colorado that want to play on the team. They're already having some problems because he fired some white kids. They're already secretly writing about it. Why you okay. think his son car okay. is now being written up and booted? Okay, let me ask you this. Colorado's still racist, y'all. I just want y'all to know that. Let they me, have a real history of racism. Let me ask you this. So I wouldn't send my black son out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. on. Just say something. How many white people are on Bill Belichick's defense? Not many, I don't think. How many white people are on Nick Saban's defense? Uh, Not many. So you're not sitting up here telling me something that I don't already know. Well... I, I, I agree with you, but you have so to look. It's not, it's not, it's not the players. The white folks will sit back and let Nick Saban go get a bunch of niggas to run. They ain't finna let no black man go get a bunch of black people to come take over a team in a predominantly white school. They're not finna do that, fam. If you you think they go let, it's, they already mad he came in and fired the player that was before them. And there's some upset alumni about that. And guess what? He's losing and he's losing his star power. You don't see any of those rappers on the sideline anymore. That's what the white folks are saying. But you don't see nobody at anybody's sideline. But hold, hold, li listen, listen to me, brother. What I'm saying is in the beginning, he generated a boom. He generated something that the college football arenas had never seen before. Star power. Look, Wayne, the baby. Stars from everywhere was coming down to support him when he was winning. That was fine and dandy for the alumni. But you still have to understand this is America. And there are some upset white people in Colorado about this situation. They're starting to write about it. That's why his son, Carr, is now unfairly getting booted. Okay, this is where I'm, we're losing kind of like traction. It's not about Dion and why he's losing star power. He's losing star power because they're not winning at the moment. Now, you can't sit up there and tell me that Bill Belichick's team, who is not sitting at any games over 500, they have a losing season. Ain't nobody selling out them seats. Ain't nobody on the sideline trying to beat down the door. They don't have primetime games, you know, when you're not winning. So it's, it's not necessarily about the person. It's about the success of the team, right? If Alabama was not as dominant and successful as they have been over these years, Nick Saban wouldn't have been able to. What? People follow success. You gotta have a hard time saying you the best coach without the success. So this is what I'm saying. He's not having a success anymore. Okay, but it takes time. Cause I can guarantee you this. If you give Nick Saban, doggone, the same roster that Deion Sanders have in Colorado, you're gonna get the same product. So if you oh, so if you give it, oh, I, if you give Deion Sanders the same roster that Nick Saban has in Alabama, it will be hard for anybody so, to so, lose. So this, so this is what I'm thinking. Everybody's missing my point. It ain't about Deion. See, y'all keep making it about Deion. It's about all y'all following him over there, yeah. supporting him. So now that he's not winning, he don't have this same star power support. So y'all going to wait till he start winning years from now to come back and ride back the sideline? That's how and, I go. In the process, what are we doing for the HBCUs that's winning? Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying, black people. So if I have to say fuck Dion to make my point, I'm going to keep saying fuck Dion. Because I'm trying to get back to hashtag HBCU. What happened to we mad about George Floyd? What did they give us to solve that? They gave his family 20 million? What about Mike Brown? So we keep following trends. And I'm saying, black people, look at us. Dion is a new trend. Y'all done quit this trend. What's next? What are we going to be consistent? So we done quit HBCUs. We done quit Dion. now he ain't winning. Look at us, y'all, is what I'm saying. Mm. We was in an uproar. Every celebrity, everybody up was in a now since he's not winning. Bandwagon because we don't have a cause. And I'm saying, y'all tricked me into believing we had a cause. Y'all had no justice, no peace. Y'all had police, unarmed black shooting. We, done, we had 
boycott the NFL, Colin Kaepernick. What happened to all these causes we keep bouncing from? So, okay, now we got Dion. I done said fuck Dion because I'm saying what happened to the HBCUs? People can't get past fuck Dion. And I'm saying what about the HBCU? People can't get past Dion. So leave out Dion and just say let's get back to the HBCU. Yeah. Yeah. HBCU. Let's take the focus off me saying fuck Dion. No, no, no. no. That's and what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, stop saying fuck Dion because you're distracting me. I got to keep saying that. No, no, I no. want to distract. You're distracting I, I wanna, the people. I want to distract. But if you want to keep saying, if you want to keep distracting people rather than telling the people what you I really don't want. Wanna tell, I don't want to tell the people because these are grown people. I don't have nothing for grown people. I work with children in a community. I'm not coming on the line to appease grown people that don't know what to do with their time, their mind, or their energy by watching a video. Fuck Deion Sanders. His wife, too. No, he not Man, no, fuck them no, people. No. Nigga, I don't give a... Nigga, I come from the ghetto. I'm going back to normal people that won't ever meet celebrities, and they don't give a damn about me saying fuck Deion. Okay, let's just put it like this, and let's come up with a rule. Don't say what you won't say in their face. Fuck Dion. And I said a nigga fake because I'm willing to die, kill, and go to jail for what come out of my mouth. I'm willing to die, kill, and go to jail for what come out of my mouth. I done already beat two aggravated assault with a deadly weapon charge. I'm willing to die, kill, and go to jail for what come out of my mouth. That's why I speak so boldly. Man, listen here. I just have a hard time. Like, only thing I got Oh, uh, the nigga who hit me across the head hit me across the head because I wouldn't quit saying what he told me I bet not say. Nigga, you a snitch, nigga. I'm willing to die, kill, and, go, and say it in his face. That's why I said, yeah, nigga, I'm willing to die, kill, and go to jail. Once you get to this point, homie, and put this suit on, and you start saying the things that I'm saying, nigga, you have to know you go see these people in your face. I ain't back down and said nothing. No. Mm. If you willing to throw your life away, I'm willing to die, kill, and go to jail about my free speech. Okay. So let's just put it like this. And, and I just got to keep it funny. Look, if it's somebody that's telling, because I don't know, I'm not Dion. You know, I, I, I can't speak for Chador, speak for, I don't believe he's married. I believe he's in a, a, a serious relationship, but can't speak for all those people. But what I can do is speak for me. And if I have an individual telling me, fuck Cam Newton, that first word that you're saying, it, it's going to be happening. Oh, I would love for it. Y'all sue the shit out of you, nigga, for assaulting me over my word. And you go pay. That's cool. That's all, I don't mind. However I get paid, I don't mind getting paid. Cool. But I'm ready to respond to yeah. whatever violence that oh, come my way. I so now, nah, homie, oh, uh, nigga. But you're going to have to respect how, 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 what comes your way. Oh, uh, nigga, I, I, I don't, I don't got to respect nothing because I'm speaking as if I don't respect it. And I'm a little bitty nigga. I'm speaking as if I don't respect it. And I'm a little old bitty nigga. Uh, and I know it's a chance I can run into these people. All these rap niggas, I see them backstage at the Kevin Gates concerts. I, I'm out and about. I'm in a strip club with these niggas. I see them. Can I ask I you a see question? Them. Can I ask you? I usually ask a lot of people these, this question. Too. Yeah. Are you a real strip club connoisseur? No. So you don't like going to strip clubs? I love them. Uh, but do you, you like, so you're a strip uh, club connoisseur? Like you, you, uh, I'm a whole specialist. Okay, I specialize cool. in hoes. All right, cool. So you will be the first male that I ask this question to, because I usually, you know, ask the females. Can you rank the strip clubs? Who had what city state has the best strip clubs? Top uh, five. Tampa Bay. Uh, Atlanta. Charlotte. Houston. DC. In my top five. Mm. Yeah. You want to rank them? Oh. Oh man, shit. I I'm gonna put Atlanta for 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 number one. Uh, for us, uh, entertainment and dancing. Yeah, if you just want to go look at some holes, working some poles, yeah, that's where you go. Uh, but boy, if you want them thrills and feels, uh, you want to go to Tampa Bay. Yeah, if you want them thrills and them feels and them oohs and them ahs, yeah, you want to go to Tampa Bay. <laughs> yeah, now if you just want entertainment, something that look good, and yeah, you come to Atlanta. But boy, if you want them thrills and feels, Tampa Bay is what that is. Uh, number three, uh, Houston. Yeah, yeah, number three, Houston. Uh, you don't got no 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 uh, no no mantra for 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 Houston. Uh. Uh, 
uh, uh, Houston, Houston for a game. Uh, Houston wide open. Uh, you know, Houston damn near uh, legalized prostitution. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's damn near open for a game. Uh, it's just that uh, Houston leads the nation in, in STDs and, and HIV. So, yeah, you got to slow down going through Houston. Yeah, you speed it. Yeah, 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 you got to slow down going through Houston. Okay. Fourth is? Uh, D.C. D.C. got some beautiful women. Uh, yeah, yeah, and they with the shit, too. Uh, but they're a little gangster. Uh, and then Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina got some of the prettiest motherfucking women walking on earth. Boy, they got some of the prettiest motherfucking women walking on earth up there in Charlotte. They do. I love Charlotte. <laughs> I had some good times in Charlotte. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, let's get into this game real quick. All right, All right Funky Friday Games uh, by Breland Butler. Uh, shout out to Breland. Charleston, you are a man of potent words, so let's play one word <laughs> with Charleston White, right? The game is simple. I have a list of names. Describe each person using the first word that comes to mind. Are you ready to play? Yeah. I got 10 names here. Just one word. Number one, Will Smith. Gay. Jada Pickett Smith. Fucked up. That's two words. Uh, bitch. Funky bitch. Yeah, bitch. That's the only word come to mind in bold letters. Adam 22. Master. Yeah, he a slave master. Sexy red. Whore. Yeah, stomp down dirty leg hoe. We're gonna have to bleep that. You trying to get me uh Well you flat. asked me what's coming to mind. This man's trying to get me flash band. Oh my goodness. I like Suki. I met Suki in person though. I like Sukiana. Real sweet young girl. What do you think about Suki? Uh, she real sweet in person. No, give me the one word for Suki. <laughs> freaky in the motherfucker. That little freaky. She ain't about freaky. Freaky. Mm. Freaky. Brittany Renner. Hot. Yeah, hot. Yeah, that motherfucker look good in person. Yeah, hot. Could you take Britney Renner serious? Oh. Uh, yeah, nigga. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. Yeah, shit, yeah. Could you have a, a, a child with, with Britney Renner? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me some free game. Like, how would you approach a, a woman like Britney? Oh. Uh, you got to handle her rough. Uh, you gotta be, you gotta be a dominant, dominant man to deal, deal with Britney, Britney Renner. When you say uh, rough, you're not talking about domestic violence, bro. Yeah, yeah, domestic violence. No, man, no. Yeah, well, you ass, nigga. I'm telling you, yeah, you got. She one of them ones you gotta kick in the ass sometime. Slap her across her head, bitch. No, sit down somewhere. No, no. Man, no, ain't ain't being no. Uncle Curtis done it, and they stayed together 40, 50 years. All good relationships, somebody got to take an ass kicking somewhere in the relationship. That that's that's right. the way y'all going to stay together. That's right. We're going to cut that out. Man, right. that man, man ass that. Man, everybody got to whoop. Man, you can't tell a nigga he can't whoop his hoe and no, she getting out of line. Stop, she the kind of hoe so, you got so to whoop. So the woman that you was with, you put your hands on your woman? Uh, I will if she take me down. No. Have you ever put your hands on your ex-wife? No. Okay, thank you. So all that shit that you talking about. Uh, I done happened. slapped the shit out of my baby mama. Huh? Yeah, I done slapped shit out of my baby mama. Driving, bitch, yeah. Hell yeah, I done open here and slap the shit out. Of, yeah, hell yeah, I slap the shit out of my bitch. No. That's my bitch. No. Man, you deal with your bitch. You, you discipline your hoe how you discipline mm -mm. yours. No. I'm going to discipline mine no. how I discipline no. mine. And yeah, man, you got that to kick some no. of them in their ass. No. I wouldn't give a damn what now. But I just put so. like, but I, look, I'm, I'm telling you. Granddaddy and them said that. I'm, tell, I'm telling you as a man, and I got to hold you accountable. If I were to ever see you put a hand on a woman, it'd be a hard time for me to see that, Charleston. Just uh, real shit. Oh, uh, well, uh, just be willing to go to jail or go to hell if you get in fact me and my bitch. Uh -huh. Nigga, that go my brother. You better leave me alone by me and my bitch. Nigga, you better go on. Nigga, that's me and my hoe. Uh -huh. You better stay out of this. And then, boom. That's how niggas die. That's cool. Me or you got to die about this cool. bitch. And, it's chances, and now both our mama the sad. The Vegas... The nah, Vegas man. odds got me winning that fight. Oh, man, Charleston. this ain't about no fight, nigga. We got to die behind my bitch. 
You interfering with me and you my You don't bitch. even love her. Nigga, I love my bitch. How you gonna love her and you gonna put your hands on Same her? Same reason you whoop your kids and tell them you love them and this why you doing this. No, no, no. It ain't no different. So think about this concept. You so tell, I, your, so you I, tell look, your children, look, I'm mm -hmm. doing this because I love you. So why I can't whoop this hoe? And I that's love why her. I'm gonna whoop your ass because I love you because I'm telling you, I have to tell you that that ain't right. So I'm Man, gonna whoop your uh, ass uh, and send you on your Marvin way. Marvin Gaye had to kill his daddy or his daddy killed his son for one of them for getting him fucked about that bitch. That's how don't don't get in that. Man, Listen, don't get in that. If I see a person putting their hands on a woman, I'm gonna put my hands on them because I love them. Yeah. And I'm gonna uh, tell you that I ain't uh, I'm we not shooting doing out of anger. Yeah, I'm shooting out of anger. Man, nigga ain't got no business getting in my business. What I'm saying, it's my bitch. Nigga, you better leave us alone. Now everybody finna die. Mm. For cause you want now your kids feel to be without their father cause you want to say this I'm bitch. Be at, I'm gonna be at home. You don't know that. I'm but, telling but, you because, I'm gonna be at home. Because what 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 ends up happening? It's always the good guy that loses his life. Mm -mm. It ain't never the we don't watch this situation hold. So that's why I don't get into domestic situation. If I see a nigga whooping this bitch, I mind my business. Yeah, that's some sucker shit. Cause I done, cause I done got in far before and the bitch say it's all right, blue. Oh okay, shit. This what they do. Let me get out of this. This what they do. No. Mm -mm. Because yeah, so. cause, cause I'm I'm speaking I'm speaking for the fathers. I got daughters. I do too. And I'm I'll, I'll be so if you, if somebody put their hands on your daughter, then what's gonna happen? Oh, uh, depend on what she did. No. You can't tell me no, nah, nigga. I was raised like this. You might now nah to you, That's nigga. True. I won't know what the fuck. If she somebody did. put their hands on now nah to you. <laughs> if somebody put their hands on Shakira or Sovereign Dior. I'm uh, listen here, man. What you do, and bro? I would hate for that to be Charleston White. Especially if White. they fucking. Listen here, let me tell you something. Bro. Especially if they fucking. No, nah, that's what we. That's where I. Oh, uh, how about? I, I you done get, said a lot of truth. I don't get involved. Uh, Charleston, I don't get involved. In you done said a lot of truth, but I, I can't agree I with that. I've seen a lot of niggas play Captain Save a hoe trying to jump in a relationship, save a woman, mm. and this nigga get killed, and she be putting money on that nigga books that killed you for trying to save her. Mm hmm But let's. She let coming to that. see that, that nigga. Ain't. She writing that nigga. She still taking care of that nigga, and you done jumped in. Now your family is sad, and this bitch still fucking with. This nigga that was slapping on. Mm -hmm. Now nah, I ain't one of them kind of niggas. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now nah, that that was a sucker role. Mm -hmm. My nigga be at the funeral saying, "Man, my nigga went out like a sucker." Mm -hmm. So hey, to each his own. But I know if a nigga get in my business with my bitch, I live in a gun state and I keep them bitches on me. And I got over 120 some motherfucking gun. I practice shooting. You only can shoot one. That's all time. right. I shoot them all good too, boy. Keep them bitches all up to shoot right like a motherfucker. All right. Moving along in our list of names with one-liners. <laughs> Boy, you a mother. But yeah, I had to grab Brittany Runner by her throat in the club to tell her, bitch, let me tell you something. No, 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 no. Yeah, I ain't no. Bullshit. Yeah, we made out like a motherfucker. That's what she You wanted. kissed Brittany Renner? Man, I, ain't, I just said we made out. I ain't said we made out in the middle of this motherfucking strip club. Hold on, what I, your I made to, out be? Because it's two uh, different forms. Uh, man, I got a, man, I can't, I can't, uh, Man, I can't go into detail. Nah, about nigga, you gonna, you gonna go into detail oh, today? Oh, oh. You been telling everything else from fuck oh. uh, this person, fuck that person, and you over here can't sit up here and say. Man, I'm you. trying to fuck. What I'm gonna tell for, and I ain't fuck yet. I'm gonna fuck up. Come on now, I'm trying to fuck. So you kiss Britney right now? That's what you saying? <laughs> Y'all made up? Yeah, she got my dick hard. On the podcast, in my lap, gave me a lap dance, and I could feel that warmness through them jeans. In those jeans. Yeah, shit, I'm damn near mm. miss my britches. But yeah, no, nah, we didn't make out, but we, we kind of made out a little bit. Oh, I don't want to go into detail, but I had to be a little rough with it. In the podcast. Uh, yeah, 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 and they deleted all the footage, so, and I'm glad they did. Good. And yeah. I guess what? I'm going to delete a lot of footage don't on this Don't do that, my shit. nigga. Please play this shit. Please let no, this go, No, I got to. I got to, because you ain't acting right, and you saying some outlandish shit. But keep saying some outlandish shit about this right here. I thought that's what you got me here for, nigga. Shit, shit. <laughs> you gonna delete it? Think I done spent all this time thinking of this crazy ass shit, and you gonna delete it? Come on, man, shit. Aiden Ross. Confused. Lizzo. Fat. Dwight Howard. Sick. Soldier Boy. Weird. Charleston White. Oxymoron. Nah, you had part of that word right. You can leave out the oxy. 
Yeah, oxymoron. Nah, yeah, yeah, nah. I'm oxymoron. you can leave out the oxy. Yeah, yeah, I'm you what just, you like. I'm you just, what you like, but can't love. I'm an oxymoron. Yeah, I'm what you like, but can't love. You like the bravadiness. You like the 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 harsh, brutal truth. Uh, but you can't love the truth because the truth hurts. And, and the truth don't care about people's feelings, and neither does God. I'm gonna say it again. The truth don't care about people's feelings. So uh, I try to tell the truth. And not consider people's feelings. So, so I, I seen this recently, uh, where it's like, I prefer to slap people with the truth rather than kissing them with the lie. Uh, tell me the truth. Uh, yeah, get, get, give me the truth so I can be free. Mm. Uh, I, I want to be free. Uh, I, I've been tricked with lies all my life. Uh, I bought the lies as a kid. I wanted to grow up and, and to realize, nigga, that the lies that we thought was true was bold lies that was told to us, boldly. So that's where a lot of my resentments come from, from the streets. Nigga, I was supposed to have been a lawyer. Uh, but because the culture brought gangsterism and made gangsterism so appealing, nigga, we done went against our mothers. We went against our, our, our better teachings to go be gangster. So that's where a lot of my resentments come from, from the streets, homie. Uh, that's where a lot of my, 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 a lot of my, my words toward rappers are ill because I know they playing gangster. I know they playing gangster. So they, so they, so they, what you use, you said they stuck on stage. They stuck on stage, homie. They can't, they can't exit. Uh, that's why when they get an interview, you can't ask them about school. That's what was so good about MTV raps. Guys like Fab Five Freddy uh, being able to go into uh, Tigger's basement and, and, and rap, do your freestyle and rap, because you get to come out of character, huh? Uh, now we making these, these niggas getting stuck in character. And so what ends up happening is when you get stuck in character, you can't exit stage because you might got a 50 year sentence stuck on stage trying to play gangster in there. When you come home, nigga, you still cuz and blood, stuck on stage. So for 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 the people that's in the culture right now, give me the top five people that you believe that is just stuck on stage. Uh I, I don't I don't know them personally. Uh so I, I can't I I just know our, our kids are stuck on stage. Mm. Uh where are the LL Cool J kind of guys? When you look out into the culture, where are the LL Cool J kind of guys? Ladies mean? love Cool Jane, the nigga who just known for fucking with the ladies. Everybody gangster, every rapper gangster, every rapper killer, even Drake talking gangster. So where where are the where are the cool Mo D kind of guys? Where are the Big Daddy Kane kind of guys that's still cool and suave that can dance? Mm -hmm. So even the football players have to play gangster. Okay, true. Even the basketball, everybody gangster yeah, now, yeah. homie. Yeah. So I'm saying, nigga, we're, 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 the, we're the, the, the playboy kind of guys. We're, we're the nigga that really want to ride the skateboard. Yeah. There's still a skater, but he cool. So you respect that? I respect that a lot. Yeah, be you. So yeah. Drake, Drake, Drake hasn't done that? Uh, no. Drake, Drake still be talking that. He kind of talk gangster. Homie. What about J. Cole? Uh, J. Cole in his own lane. Uh, what about uh, K. Dot, Kendrick Lamar? He in his own lane. You respect their work, right? Yeah. Yeah, a, um, a great deal. So in recent, <clears throat> what I seen, I I I, I hate gangsterism, uh, because the gangster rapper is only telling one story. Yeah. And 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 and, and is used as, even though we like the music, it's the propaganda for our destruction. Mm -hmm. So it's being so so prison, jail, killing, drugs, whores. Uh, not being responsible fathers, not being husbands, all of that is propagated, promoted, projected, and glorified. And you're not using your platform to have propaganda too when you're saying, you know, you want to have insolicit children, uh, I, I, your people, uh, you want to uh, put your hands uh, on your woman? Uh, uh, I, I, I don't use that. I just answer the question. Oh. I, I, I don't speak that. I speak against destruction in the community. But you, you just... That was a question asked. I, I don't use that. So what they use, they platform to consistently talk about killing people. I don't consistently talk you about- You use women. your platform by saying fuck black people. No, I don't. I don't say fuck black people. 
You say flip, uh, fuck Nipsey Hussle, fuck King. Oh, Bug. that's a rapper. So Nipsey Hussle is a Nipsey Hussle is a Rolling Sixty rapper. Okay. Rolling Sixties do what? Kill black people. So he's, said, a, so he's a crip rapper, Rolling Sixty, right? Mm hmm. King Vaughn is a serial killer, okay. documented by the FBI. Yeah. Who wouldn't say fuck them? Okay, what about fuck Deion Sanders? Fuck Deion Sanders. But why? He's Who a, he killed? He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a idolized worship celebrity. But why fuck him? He ain't killed nobody. He's an idolized worship celebrity. So you, so that's a hater? Uh, no, this is what I'm saying. Where was y'all at when they were saying smoking tuka? Because Tuka was a kid. That was doggone. I'm talking about Deion Sanders. You okay, already so, made your so, point about King Von. I'm saying Deion Sanders. So, so let's just say this. So Tuka's mother is still alive. You are so, talking so, hold, hold on, hold on. This is what I'm saying. So why are y'all so stuck on Deion Sanders, homie, when these kids' mothers are still alive who these rappers disrespect? And y'all don't have nothing to say about that. I'm not talking about that, Charleston. All I'm saying is you're pressing me by Dion, and I'm saying all you you just defended King Von. King Von, five people came up dead for King Von to come out of jail. What about their family? I'm not talking about that. So King it's Von. easy to say fuck Dion. No. But yeah. why? You what made you mean a, by? such a be, because, because he's a he's a worship idolized celebrity. That sounds like a hater. Who Charleston. we think sold out. He didn't sell out. You say he didn't, but it's some of us that say he did. That's cool. So we have our opinions. You just happen to be a celebrity who knows this celebrity. Yes, sir. But I bet if you come to the barbershop, I bet it's a bunch of people saying, fuck Dion, because they got to pay bills. Because I guarantee you We this. don't give a damn about Dion. Because I guarantee you this. I guarantee you this. And I'm going to drop the mic with this one. Ooh. I bet you the same people who say, fuck Dion, including yourself, would do the same thing Dion has done. I don't know, I already not did it. I just walked away from five million. That Public. ain't talking about but, And I could have I could have done a whole lot for my community with that five million. Guess what? I'm still dealing with more without that five million. I walked away from five okay, million. Okay, that's you. But everybody in that damn well, that you barber just said, shop. You just said it. In that barber me. shop. You they, just if, said including you, me, though. If you were have to ask a person if you would want Deion Sanders' life, or if you could change into Deion Sanders' life, hell, to hell with Deion Sanders at this particular point. You would change lives with Shador Sanders. You would change lives with Shiloh Sanders. You would change... That you talking your little two cents the, in that barbershop. You, you, the only reason you would change lives because you're looking to see what the possessions they got. You don't know what soul they walk with. You don't mm. know what spirit they possess. You don't mm. know what demons they battle. You don't know what vices. You don't know none of that. So you're looking at the outer, and I don't think most people would do that. <laughs> They would. I don't think the most same people, people that because, talk because, shit because guess what? You, 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 got, you got to understand. In an instance. You got to understand, even though they grew up with their father, they had dysfunction mothers and they had publicly fights between mother and father. Remember, Dion them had an ugly divorce for a long time, Pilar. It was real ugly in the public. And they said a whole bunch of things about Dion. So come on, man, let's not talk that talk. We don't know what them boy was suffering with when their mama was publicly doing what she was doing to the daddy and the daddy was crying out in public, going through that divorce in court. All of his schools failing because they were stealing the money at them motherfucking me charter schools over in Dallas and Fort Worth. They couldn't pass. Come on now. Let's talk it. We go talk. So it's a bunch of people that's poor that's not looking at celebrities, wishing that they can trade places with celebrities. Because a lot of them motherfucking niggas like Dion and such, whatever they name is, for them niggas to get the helmet, it's going to be trying to squeeze a camel through the eye of a needle. Rolls Royce driving motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, going to him going to be hard, you Rolls Royce driving motherfucker, you. That's just what mama and them said. I don't believe half that shit. I just pay attention to what mama and them said. All right. Moving right along. Here we go. What happened between you and Wack 100? Uh, nothing. Uh, me and Wack actually done become cool, man. Uh, we, talk, we talked a few months ago uh, to do a podcast. Uh, personas? Yeah, we ain't never even met in person uh, to have no altercations. You ain't never met Wack I never met Wack in person. Never ever. I ain't met no Y'all internet either. beefing. Yeah, we internet beefing. And we ain't really even internet beefing. Uh, Wack really want to be a nigga friend. He want to be your friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and we, done, we, done, we done talked over the, last, over the last 60 days. And is it true that the Michael Jordan had, an, had to intervene? 
But no, that's bullshit. Michael Jordan, you don't know? Nah, man, I ain't never even been in no place with Michael Jordan. Uh, 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 that internet a motherfucker. Because the internet just shows y'all Michael Jordan. They ain't show y'all me. Mm. And they took, I said, man, no, nah, nigga, I wouldn't dare be nowhere with Michael Jordan be. Man, I don't hang around them type of niggas be. Okay, can I be honest? Yeah. You would never be in those places. Never. Because he, he's a big B. Like, not no banger, he's a billionaire. Like, yeah, I know, I wouldn't dare go nowhere with a billionaire. You know what you got to do? Dude? You know what type of sick motherfucker you got to be to acquire a billion? You know how perverted your mind got to be to get Why a billion Why you got to be perverted? Uh, because I, I understand life and I understand uh, the realm of things. Uh, Why you just can't have favor to be like, yo, you, uh, well, you, you had you, a good but, talent but you, to you be are. able to, you, you, you're gonna, you're gonna to get make that. a lot of money. Yeah, but you're still going to have your vices and your demons which is, with, with which all those talents. Which is fine, we all do. So, so one thing I know about a bill, you know, nigga, they get to do whatever they want to do. And you want so much pleasure, you get to meet it. It's, and you can't you do whatever do. you want to do? Oh, uh, no. Nah, hell no. Nah, I can't fuck 10 bitches right now if I want to fuck 10 bitches. I might fuck two, but not 10. You got a game like that? No, nah, no. Nah, you got to have money to fuck 10. You ain't got that money? I ain't not to fuck 10. I can fuck two with the money I got. What type of, like, they gonna be 10s or they gonna be like twos? Oh, uh, no, nah, they gonna be 10s. Like, what's considered a 10? Like, uh, the eye of the beholder. Cause what's a 10 to you might be a 15 to me. What's a, yeah, you see what I'm saying? So it's the right. eye of the beholder. Who you think that's fine right now? Let me, uh, let me see what your type is. Beyonce. But you just said fuck Jay-Z. They don't you, give a damn about them. I can say fuck a nigga wife and still wanna fuck his wife. I can say fuck him and still lust on his wife. You think Beyonce will ever give you a chance? Uh, no. Okay, that, that conversation is over with then. Um, but, yeah, well, uh, why was she a married woman? So, of course, yeah, nigga. You th so, you would... You Man, if, me and, if, Be if me and Beyonce had to be around each other for two weeks, you goddamn right I'd get her. But that is never going to happen. Oh, uh, I don't want it to happen. You just asked me a question, nigga. But I don't you, find it. you just asked me a question, nigga. I don't want. I ain't. I ain't want. But this to I asked the question if you had the game to pull a Beyonce. Well, but you saying it never would happen, so you just asking possibilities. So I'm just asking the question, nigga. I wouldn't give a damn if it happened or not. Mm. Who else? Give me. Give me another person. Let me see that. that, that. Ivanka Trump. You think you'd pull her? I know I could. How do you do? You sliding the DMs or you? you, uh, you no. Uh, you put me in the room with any woman for two weeks, I get her. Two weeks, Charleston. Yeah. yeah. Why would anybody want to be with you for two weeks? Uh, you just ask me questions. I'm just answering them. Why would somebody want to be with you for two weeks? Oh, uh, we could work on a job. We could be on a project together. You just put me in the presence of any woman where I have to consistently be in her presence, and I can get her. Mm. Conversation rules the nation. And you think you got that much game? Uh, I got the world watching me just from talking, and I ain't no celebrity. Mm, you are a celebrity. I am now, but I would. I talk my way up here yeah. just for conversation. Yeah. Straight conversation. Over, over, just on one platform, I'm over three billion. That's just on TikTok. Uh, just between me and Say Cheese TV, I'm over five billion. What? Yeah, I do a million views in one day on just one platform. What you think this gonna do? Uh, it's gonna do some numbers. Because of what? Uh, because of my conversation. And that you admitted to you being a moron. Uh, nah, I'm an oxymoron. Uh, I've never done nothing wrong to nobody. See, the thing about this is, uh, you don't hear nobody say I've done wrong to nobody. It's always, well, he said this. Mm. See, I thought it was actions speak louder than words. So what I realized is most people are hypocritical. They stuck on words. That's why they ignore most people's actions like celebrities. That's why they ignore R. Kelly actions for so long when he was child molesting. That's why they ignore Jay-Z's action when Foxy Brown came out and said he was putting that harsh dick in her in the Source magazine. Remember that interview? Uh -uh. You might be too young. Source. Foxy Brown came out and said Jay-Z was fucking her when she was 16. So if we just go, come on now. So that's why action don't speak louder than words to black people. Because if you go to look in the action, you look at Dion can't keep a marriage. He been divorced how many times? This is how many wives he done had? Three or four? So we are following a man who can't how many times? That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Known for sleeping with multiple women throughout his life. Whoremonging man. Maybe that's why God took his toe. <laughs> Turf toe motherfucker. Okay. So I'm, that's all I'm saying. So this is a man who done abused multiple women. 
Pilar has so much to say about it. Go get the divorce papers. Abusive. And come on, they had, come on now. I was paying attention because I lived in Dallas at the time, so it was big talk in Dallas. And we ain't gonna talk about when he was in Atlanta fronting the dope niggas down here when he was playing for the Atlanta Falcons. All that's documentation. All that's documentation. Speculation. Okay, well, we'll say speculation, but there's no speculations on Charleston White. It's just what he says, it's just conversation. So when you look at Charleston White, you see he's a father, a husband, a community activist, a youth advocate. You ain't got nothing on me. Ex husband. Cool. You ain't got uh, nothing on me. Snitch. You ain't got no uh, paperwork. Talk down no on paperwork. black people. No paperwork. No paperwork. It ain't no paperwork on me. You got to have paperwork on the snitch. No paperwork. The cooning, nigga, we get with every black city I go to. Nigga, I do way more for black people than any celebrity I know. To date. You think you do more than the community? To date. To, than me? To date. Yeah, to date. Than me? Yeah, to date. How old you is? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm 46 years old. Okay. And I've been doing this for over 12 years okay. at every level in every institution from the White House mm -hmm. to Congress to state legislation to the prisons, so, the schools, the alternatives, capital murder cases, robbery cases. I'm at every level and I consistently do it and I haven't taken a break. I haven't taken off to go play football. Mm -hmm. I, I, this is my life. And you can say that you did more for Atlanta. Uh, I ain't Cali. from it. I don't give a fuck about Atlanta. I ain't did a motherfucking Ooh. thing from Atlanta. No, 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 Nigga, why would I come here and do it. something with Atlanta? I'm talking about where it. I'm from. Don't you go nowhere else and do nothing if that ain't where you from. You got a village. And it says it takes a village to yes. raise a child. So go to your village. Yes. Don't go to nobody else's village. Right. I come over here to shine my light on people like this brother here that's doing something. Mm -hmm. So I come to other places to shine my light. I don't come to help y'all. Mm. Because I don't have no connection here. My heart is at home. Okay. So I wouldn't dare come here and try to. I don't say give a that. damn. Fuck it. I don't give a damn about helping now, some bitch in Atlanta. Yeah. Nigga, we come here to party and fuck it whole like everybody else do and gone. Nigga, y'all help her. But I do do work here though. But no, nah, nigga, just the work that I do consistently over 12. Can't now, no, nah, man. Uh-uh. And I'm and I'm and I'm and I'm bold with it. Because what I've been doing is, I ain't been asking nobody to help. I've been going to the community saying, say y'all, this what I'm doing. And the community watched me do it, and they come join in. So what I did was, I pride myself in having a 501c3 organization that stayed in good standing and never asked for donations. Because I had a Jewish attorney show me how to become self-sustainable. Well, we don't ask nobody for nothing to help us take care of our people. And we damn sure ain't asking our people for nothing. So I don't post cash apps. I don't ask for money. I don't ask to don't share nothing. Don't, I don't ask to do that. This is what I'm doing, whether y'all join in or not, and my people come join in. Mm -hmm. It's called self-sustainability. Yes, sir. No fundraising, no nothing. I don't apply for grants, no nothing. I make the doughboy nigga. That's where the snitching come from. Because if I'm giving away toys and you say a dope nigga, I'm gonna shut your house down, nigga. You don't come bring no toys down here. You when we, You goddamn right, nigga. Cause you selling dope in so, this community. Hold on, you been selling dope in this community for four years, nigga. You see every summer we feeding kids down here and you ain't gonna give us nothing? So you extorting folks. You goddamn right. I extort the drug dealers by way of threatening to snitch. Are we willing to go to war with you, nigga? Oh, you, who, uh, who me, is listen, me? this is what I'm telling you. I got an army of niggas behind me. Okay. It ain't just me just talking. Because one little man can't talk and say all this stuff and not be protected by an army. No, you protected by the jurisdiction of the... Who? Who? Uh, so, you, so, so you listen. Admit it. You, so, 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 hold on. So, let me ask you. So, when I get off the plane and I Uber here, who's protecting me? No, because you said it yourself. If I were to put my hands on you or somebody put their hands on you, you either going to get locked up. When? Do, hold on. When do gangster niggas who hurt people give a damn by going to jail and they want to hurt somebody? That's cool, but but that's what you're standing on. But no, no, listen. Hold on. Listen, listen. We keep not, hold on. Look, he keep, see, he keep missing hell in jail. See, he keep overlooking hell in jail. Didn't I say hell in jail? Mm -hmm. I'm known for packing a gun. Mm -hmm. I'm known for this. So you ain't just going to jail. You might go to hell too, nigga. Mm. You might go to hell. So that ain't tough talk. Charles. I'm not trying to be tough. I'm trying to clean up the community. But when you sitting up here saying fuck this and fuck that, I am. That, well, y'all can't tough be tough talk. But that ain't tough talk. 
That's a man who's standing on what he's saying. Why they got to be tough? And you know you're protected because but if protected I were, by or who? somebody re, if, if somebody retaliates to the words that you say, you could either die or go to jail. Right. So what am I protected? So what? Protect? So what? So let, let me just say this: an assault ain't nothing but a misdemeanor, a fifty dollar bond. Who afraid to go to jail for whooping a nigga? Then you better sit your motherfucking ass down here, nigga. Leave me alone. If you afraid to go to jail for assault, you better leave me alone. Mm. Cause I just be the aggravated assault with a deadly weapon case against him. Nah, you better leave me alone, my nigga. I ain't just talking just to be talking. If you afraid to go to jail, then you better leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, you better just keep your feelings to yourself. Cause I come from niggas don't give a damn about going to jail. Nigga, you do something to violate them, they don't give a damn about that jail or bond. Sure. Your ass is grad. Them the kind of niggas I be looking for. So I see, I see what you want. So, so, so this is what you want to happen, right? Cause Y'all ain't doing nothing but raising nah, nah, blood. This, this, hold on, this hold is on, what I want to happen. This is what I want okay. to happen. I want grown men to get out their feelings and stop letting words of people that they don't know to affect them. Because don't you got a woman to lead? Don't you got children? So if you sitting around saying what I'm saying, don't you know the right, the law give me the right to defend myself for free speech. You can't hurt me for my mouth. So be willing to die or go to jail, That's you tough cool. motherfucker. Listen, but so all you're doing is just saying this. You're, you're, you're agitating an argument because what you gonna say is, hey, man, fuck Cam New. What Cam gonna say? Man, fuck Charleston White. You ain't gonna do I'm that. I'm not, in, in my on, mind, hold on, listen. in my mind, when I say fuck King Von, King Von did, so he ain't saying fuck me back. When I say fuck King Von, I'm making a point because I'm sitting next to Tuka's mother. See, that's what y'all keep missing, my nigga. But, I met, hold on, listen, homie. I'm telling you, I met this, bo this baby's mother. And this boy is saying, smoke this kid. Not only that, he done killed other people. So it's easy to say, fuck him, my nigga, when you done met these victims. That's all I'm saying. It's easy to say, fuck Deion Sanders, when you got these Jackson State football kids in your phone. See, that's what y'all missing. All this is because I work with children. Fuck Nipsey, he a rolling 60 crip, cuz. They kill black people. They mislead children. So it's easy to say, fuck that. But I ain't saying fuck black women. But y'all defending these. But you just said you're going to slap a black woman. No, no, I didn't. I said I, I said I would slap my woman, but I ain't slap my woman. Okay. I don't slap my woman. See, this is the black man getting caught on words and not actions. That's how y'all getting played on, black man. It ain't y'all. Don't think you, you, but, but you sticking to my words and not my actions. That, but that because because here's I the thing. But, 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 no, 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 no. I've been saying that for the longest. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 listen. I will slap my woman, nigga, but I haven't. Okay. Nigga, you think grandma and granddad ain't been together 50, 60 years and he ain't slapped Mabel? And you don't think Mabel slapped him? It don't matter, but you's trying to rebut the truth. You think people are standing together 40, 50 years and they hadn't put their hands on each other in no instance. I think my parents... I, I just, on, yes, just, yes, brother, just, just listen, because, listen. because hey, yes hey, or no. Look, I'm trying to tell yes you Yes or no. I'm trying to tell all you I'm asking Every look, time do, I ask you a question, you got all this doctrinated I'm asking, information all, all that I'm, I'm sitting up here you, trying to homie, tell you, you and then you're people, not listening to me. All I'm asking, and I'm just trying to do, tell you Do you think you people stay together you 30, 30, 40 years? And you just me on Fuzzy Friday, which is hosted by Cam Newton, and I'm over here trying to talk, and you still talking, and I'm sitting up here trying to make my point. I'm trying to tell you what we have. Right every now, question you it's not me. gonna happen because you're not gonna overtalk me. Man, I'm trying to I'm tell you. I'm trying you, to tell you. I invited to tell you over here. I'm trying and you to tell you. And you came by the good graces of God. I'm and trying with to tell you. All the security behind the scenes I'm that you got to tell behind you. With I ain't got no security. Then, I got I see info. That, I see that person I got over info there. Mind. I see that person over there. I see the person that on camera that you said, man, I really love. And that's the weed man. I really love Dion Sanders and all this nonsense. I don't love. I ain't said that, nigga. I ain't said that. I'm telling you that what. We done that. press that record button. It's a whole different that. Charles to White than when we don't press the record button. Man, I ain't said he got man, the same Charles to White. Man, all this and that the third. I went off on the staff. I went off on the staff this morning. And all this and that and this. And I'm just sitting up and telling you. I went off on the staff this morning. And you said fuck this and that. And all this and you said fuck this and that. I said the nigga don't book me. He ain't paid me. I done did all that. Nigga don't book me for a friend of you. I ain't got no money. You want to sit up here and you want to dollar and say that? So I've been doing off. And you want to say that? I've been doing off. And you want to say this?
And you want to say I've that? been going and out. Oh, you do. I've been it. going out. It's bumping I've your been gun. going out. I've been going out. That's I asked this want. man one simple mean. question. They you think that. ain't nobody been married 40, 50 years and ain't put their hands on each other. He went to a whole dialogue. And I prove my point. He that went to a whole dialogue. He went to a whole you dialogue. But it goes back you to prove my point. The black my man is stuck on is words this. and not action. You are the black man is stuck on words and not action. Words man, listen, this, this, this is a free interview. This is a free interview that I'm doing. And then you gonna sit up here and I don't go to jail nobody. or hell. That's what you said. I didn't say it. You I said, said you I'm willing. I said I'm you willing. Argue I'm willing to, to go to jail. Lungs. I'm and willing to go to jail for, for what comes out of my mouth. You want to my exact word? Say, I'm willing la, la, to die, la, la, kill, la, la, and go la, la, to jail. La, la. And I've said this on every platform, and my tune ain't changed. It ain't changed real. It ain't changed on now platform. I'm willing to die, kill, and go to jail for what come out this mouth. And the nigga ain't hit me in the mouth yet. Whether I'm trying to agitate or not, you niggas stay in your feelings. Ain't nobody hit me in the mouth yet. They go for Dion, King, Vaughn, people. Everything I done disrespect, nigga, I done looked in the face. I went to the West Coast, nigga, and disrespected all the nip people. Same thing happened there. I ain't back down yet. And it's on, it's on every video, every stage. I ain't back down yet. So take it how you want to take it. I'm standing on it. So fuck Dion. Fuck him. And his wife, too, P. Law. Yeah, I didn't have to check that bitch. So, yeah, I'm with all that. Yeah, I'm with all that. You just want to argue. Mm -mm. And, and I, uh, some. I get paid to argue. Now, I get paid $10,000 interview to argue. I don't want to argue if I ain't getting paid. Yes. I like the dialogue. Listen, you said something in this interview that may have went over a lot of people's heads, but I caught it. You said what you really wanted to be was a lawyer. And what I'm hearing today is a person that is a great debater. Well, what he failed to realize is I told him I work on capital murder and death penalty cases. Mm -hmm. I just made that. I just so sat here and said, and it's in. Oh, no, no, no. Listen, I'm not agitating because I'm speaking from a child's perspective of children. That's what he keep. That's what he keep going all around. I'm a youth advocate. Who's talking about the kids from Jackson State? Who's in my phone? He overlooking the fact that I told him I work on capital murder and death penalty cases as a criminal defense mitigation spec. I told him that, but he's not listening. See, because he got a narrative he's trying to paint. That's why he got questions wrote down. It ain't for dialogue. This ain't for dialogue. This is a narrative. That's why we never got the King Von. That's why we never got really the Nipsey. We stay stuck on Dion. This is about defending Dion. This ain't about Charleston and what Charleston do. This is about Dion. 40 to 50 to 60 percent of this whole interview been about Dion. Come on now. Because. And this ain't supposed to be about Dion. HBCUs is what I keep saying, y'all. As a community activist, as a spokesman for the youth, when you say, fuck that bitch, what are you telling to them? Uh, the fuck you? that bitch. Because they got some bitches they saying fuck. As, I tell, a, as I, an activist, that's As an I, activist and as a community youth, that I talk to kids like that. Nigga, fuck that bitch. Yeah, I talk to kids like that too. Mm. Yeah, nigga, fuck that bitch. That white school teacher don't know the fuck she talking about. Nigga, fuck that bitch. Just do good in class and don't pay that bitch no mind. I talk like that to the little niggas. Yeah, nigga, fuck that. Yeah, I talk like that because that's where we come from. See, I started out talking, saying, say, look at our young brother. Say, look at our young sister. They don't relate to that. I watch how they mamas come in and talk. If you don't sit your motherfucking ass down, boy, I'm going to whoop your ugly ass. So I started trying how the parents talk to the kids, and it became much more effective. Much more effective. You cannot address kids who listen to cussing music all day and don't cuss to them and think you're going to get your point across. All day long they're hearing, fuck you, bitch, suck my dick, god damn it, kill my... And you think you feel to come, excuse me, can you... No. Say, boy, if you don't cut that goddamn shit down and go get your ass in that motherfucking bathtub. Better response. Qualitative study. I tried it. You talking to a nigga got over 12 years and it can't nobody tell me nothing. Nothing. Especially no young nigga. I'm a young nigga. You a young nigga. Mm -hmm. Young nigga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boy, you fresh off the porch. Mm -hmm. With a structured life. Mm -hmm. 
No, nigga, I, about as long as you've been in the league, that's how long I've been dealing with these poor nigga babies who've been killing for the last 12 years. And, and, and I swear in in court as an expert with my hand on the Bible. Sworn in the court as an expert. So I think I know what I'm talking about. I think I know what I'm talking about, too. Mm -mm. I think you just came to defend Dion. Mm -mm. That's been the only position here that I got out of this. Out of all this talk, it ain't about, man, do you I'm going to let you talk, and then I'm going to uh, uh, Well, we done already talked. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you talk. Okay, thank you. No interruptions. Oh, uh, now I don't want you to listen to no long, drawn out speech. You got to, yeah, nigga, I don't want so you to hear no nigga your talk. Narrative, your narrative is said, I came here and we talked about Deion Sanders for 70% of the whole interview, but that's the only time or the only thing in the subject that I can relate to. So I'm, I'm speaking on my perspective. Well, I done wasted my time, nigga. I, don't, I ain't travel all the way here to talk about no other nigga. Oh, mm. uh, yeah, no, nah, nigga, I ain't travel just to talk about nah, no nigga nah, I don't like. No, nah, relatability, bro. I don't want to relate to no nigga because my time and my energy is for kids. Mm -hmm. Homie, my whole time I came here to, nigga, to fuck with babies. I don't want to spend my time talking to no nigga for free. Mm. Don't get no monetary. No, nah, I don't want to relate like that. Mm. I don't like sports that much because I don't watch sports. Mm -hmm. I don't watch basketball. I ain't into sports. I'm into them niggas in the community. Mm -hmm. so my life revolves around, so I don't want to relate that, to nothing about that. That don't mean that I don't. Oh, uh, that I ain't got nothing to do with you. I'm speaking for me, that, but we hadn't talked community and I'm speaking, here. And I'm speaking but but about, this is what I'm saying. I'm we speaking ain't, about me. But we didn't. We ain't been talking community here. We've been talking Dion celebrityism. Mm -hmm. We ain't been I'm talking a celebrity, and I ain't. So okay. that's the divide. That's cool. That's that's why. So, that's why you notice I kept making reference. Y'all up there looking down, and we up here looking up. I I'm, kept I kept putting me down here with the regular people. And I'm I kept down putting y'all up there with the celebrities. But I'm down there though. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. But the people down here don't give a damn what I'm saying about Dion but, because but life see, don't allow them. See that's what, see that's what you don't know. Well, I'm around you the community. You don't know what I do in the, in the I, community. I'm, I, I'm not knowing. I'm not trying to know what you do. Okay, I'm cool. saying I put me down here. That's fair. And what you just said on here is that you. You're a celebrity. So I'm not, this had nothing to do with what you in the community. I said, that's why I kept saying, y'all up here and we down here. You are a celebrity. I ain't. You are. I ain't. You are. I remain down here. But anytime you get paid. I remain down here. You become a celebrity. I think therefore I am. So I remain down here. Okay, cool. So tell me this, Mr. Charleston, before we adjourn. Tell the people what you do in the community. Uh, man, by this point, they know what I do. It's documented exactly. what I do. Exactly. So you're going to sit up there and say, man, you ain't talking about what I do for the community. Uh, uh, la, la, well, la, la, la. well we, we done already spent talking about what we talking about, so there's no need for me to talk about what I need to talk about. There's no need. Uh, uh, but, tell, really, but tell me this, though, respectfully. Though, I, I, respectfully. Really, I really, I well, really tell me, don't. Tell me, tell, me, tell me what you got coming out, man. Uh, you mentioned a uh, movie. Oh, okay. I got a movie coming out about the 1997 uh, Atlanta Freaknik called We Out Here. Uh, I, play a, I play a role by the guy by the name of Chop, a uh, smooth little nigga that's the leader of the crew, but he's not the leader of the crew. Uh, that should be coming out in a couple of months. Uh, and then Turkey Giveaway. What you, tell me the structure of the turkey. What do you do with that? Uh, I got my man right here, right here in Atlanta. So uh, You doing turkey giveaways in Atlanta? Yeah. Uh, when? Saturday. So, so what I do is I partner with people here in Atlanta uh, that's unknown to the world. And I bring my light and shine my light uh, yeah, so they can burn off that light. Is there any way that I could donate? Yeah, that go the man right there. The one you said security was right there. That's the turkey giveaway. Yeah, I right see. There. Behind the scenes, y'all can't see. But listen, he got a bunch of security guards back here. One of them really big. I can't really tell because- Yeah, you got InfoMars. You got InfoMars from the InfoMars platform that did my documentary, went back to my city. Uh -huh. uh, this man here is from Atlanta. I'm, got, I'm lying, by the way. Listen, uh, uh, listen. He got he got a, a a good crew with him. I see three three fellas. Yeah, so. all them nigga podcast niggas. So all them niggas yeah. is guys who I met uh, throughout this journey, okay. right? Uh, we've done a lot of work. He's come to my home city. Uh, he booked me for a podcast. He does community work. I find out that he does community work. So I got three different juvenile youth curriculums that I'm giving to him. One is an anti-gang cognitive intervention program that he can teach at the juvenile facilities after school program. I met this young brother. He was a promoter who booked me. So he and I have been doing business, traveling around the country, doing shows, podcasts. So I met all these guys doing black business on the journey. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's every city I go to. 
So I, 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 I come online to say fuck celebrities uh, because I know it's a divide between regular common people and celebrities. The regular common people have what I call an entertainment whore's mind. So they, they either worship or idolize. They either worship or idolize, so they make these people gods. And then there's another faction just saying what I'm saying. Nigga, fuck them niggas. I got to pay bills. Nigga, I got five motherfucking kids. I don't give a damn about what that nigga doing. I'm with them people. But I'm also with the people that resent, nigga, those at the top. Those are kids. Mm -hmm. That's why when they cousins at the top come down here, they play on them. Because it's a big divide between the haves and the have-nots. And that's the biggest divide between black people, the haves and the have-nots. So who bridging that? Nobody. And I ain't trying to. Nigga, I'm playing on the fact that it exists. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to ask for your help with something. Do you, do you care to hear? Nigga, ask the question, yeah. Uh, I have a, uh, a program, C1N, right? This is my give back initiative. I give back by using my God-given talent in football to educate the youth. Been doing it for going on 13 years. So when you see the lackings of a Deion Sanders uh, player by the name of Travis Hunter, he came through my program. When you see multiple players that's in the NFL right now, Deshaun Watson, uh, Justin Fields, uh, so many different others, Heisman hopeful, uh, Bo Nix, uh, Sam Howell, who also is in the NFL, multiple players that I did not mention. Um, I've been working with my team and I need your help and I, I, I love your mind, right? Very educated young man, by the way. Uh, all that other stuff that we was doing, that was surely out of entertainment purposes and that was just to get somebody to click. But now that I got your attention, Charleston White, I'm asking for your help to be able to work alongside with me. I got you. To help create a cur curriculum for my uh, program. It, 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 if nothing else I know about sports, it's a great tool for character development. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a great tool for self-discipline. Uh, it's a great tool for helping a young man uh, identify uh, with a team and a team concept to become mm -hmm. a team player, which ultimately helps him work better as a family member. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, I'm all for that. What I, what I, and I don't want to throw this out there like that, but that's been my plight with the Dallas Mavericks, the Dallas Cowboys, the Texas Rangers, and the rappers. When they come to our cities, uh, the poor children in the ghetto, in the communities, never get to touch these people. Mm. Never. I can't think of now black school, homie, where the Mavericks do. So, nigga, I'm saying this when Dion was there. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this to the radio stations. I'd have gotten into it with the radio stations. Nobody is bringing these people to to our least of those people, the people who won't ever get to go to a game. The fact that they could walk to a school, homie, walk through a school and change a kid's life forever just that one day. So that's my beef with the rappers. Nigga, they come do concerts. Nobody's coming to the community to let our kids, to let our people touch them if they can't afford the program. Mm -hmm. So I would be more than, than happy and willing to, to collaborate with you and join uh, to help you create a curriculum. For nothing else, homie, we to develop character. Yes, sir. Number character, homie. Because this is the reality of, of my situation, right? I uh, have a saying that I, I, I tell my kids, you don't have to do nothing special to be special. Keep the main thing the main thing. Most of the time when kids are not, or athletes, student athletes per se, that has an elite skill set there's a high percentage of time that they're no longer able to show that skill set in something unrelated to that skill. What I mean by that is this. I tell kids to be like me in regards to why I'm not in the NFL because somebody thinks Cam is not good and I'm cool with that because that's discretionary. What you would never find in the reason why I'm not in the league I didn't slap nobody. I didn't get caught with drugs. I didn't put my hands on a woman. I never promoted violence. I did right by my platform. I promoted togetherness and unity in my community. So when you say, I go back to the hood, that's something I stand on. My father instilled that in, in me. So whether you knew it or not, I've been doing this for years. 
Uh, in regards to athletes, I, my heart goes out to a guy like Mikey, uh, his last name Williams, uh, because that's how most of our kids are no longer able to play because it's not that he don't got a good jump shot. It's not because he can't catch the football. It's not because he can't throw. It's they are looking up to people that are stuck on stage. They not in a, in a way to be able to say, bro, I'm so locked in on my sport that I don't have time to frolic around with drugs or violence or anything like that, that I see Mikey and I'm saying, bro, had I been able to talk to him, had I been able to kind of put him in my program, I guarantee you to tell him like, yo, that game banging shit, that shit lame as hell, bit, bro. Why would you want to do that? You Mikey, bro, you're the most influential kid in high school. Everybody want to be you. You don't got a dog on slap somebody. So to this, I'm going to show you the power of, of, of really being gangster, right? You say you can send out a hit. That's gangster to me. Because if you disrespect my name, I'm not going to be the one that's going to slap you. I'm worth too much money. I understand that. I understood that at a young age. But that don't mean people don't stand by me and say, bro, don't worry about it, bro. I'm going to handle that for you, right? See, people look at me and they say, damn, bro, this nigga Cam off the chain. But what they don't know is Cam has never took a sip of alcohol a day of his life. He's never ever did drugs a day of his life. Not marijuana, not cocaine, none of that shit. Why? Because when I was in high school, I got a very, very vivid memory when I was in a car, right? And I felt this one in my core. And it was, it was like it was yesterday. I was in a car and some of my teammates were smoking weed. <sighs> And my brother was smoking weed too, right, in that car. And you know, smoking weed etiquette, pass it around the circle, right? I'm a germaphobe, that's why I stick to cigars, you feel what I'm saying? You can't shut no cigar, that ain't something that people do. But anywho, nevertheless, in that car, at a young age in high school, and I seen people smoking weed, and my brother was smoking weed, he looked at me, and he said, boy, if I ever see you smoking weed, I'm going to beat your motherfucking ass. That hit me to my core. I never reached for a, a weed a day in my life, but I was always around it. My brother told me that. That's why I never smoked weed a day in my life. At 15, 16 years old, so now when I'm around people and they smoking and this, that, and the third, I don't have the heart or desire to smoke weed because of the, the words that my brother told me. You feel what I'm saying? And that was coming from a weed smoker, you feel me? So I don't drink because I didn't necessarily have a person in my household. I was raised in the church, right? So it was like people were drinking or they was doing this and they was doing that. I just seen so much when I was going on college visits and the people who always was drinking, they fell out of control of how they were acting. So you mean to tell me you can drink a substance and then you doggone lose memory or lose conscious of control of your body? I'm a control freak. I like to control things, right? And you blacked out. You don't remember last night? No, nah, bro, what happened? No, nah, I don't want to do that. You mean to tell me I can't have control over myself if I were to drink a substance or cocaine, crack, heroin, a lean? That shit lame to me. But I don't judge the people who do it. They got a story behind what, why they do their stuff too. So I use my platform. I don't just say one finger, one pinky, one thumb, love. I really love people, right? So when you decided to come on this platform, it wasn't to bring hatred amongst people. It was pretty much to promote because like I told you early on, I said, bro, behind everything that you're saying has some truth. And you were speaking the gospel. Uh, I, 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 I don't use my platform to help nobody. Uh, I didn't come to the internet. I didn't create a platform to be helpful. I don't love people to help everybody. I only love what I know. I only care about what I'm, what I'm connected to, and that's what I know. Mm -hmm. So I don't come and use my platform to uplift black people. I give a damn about black people, my nigga. I care about my kind, my niggas, and my kind. I can see a black person getting his ass kicked by the police. I ain't jumping in. I would have been the same black people standing right there watching George Floyd die. I wouldn't have sacrificed my life to push that cop off that nigga. So I didn't create no platform for black people. Nigga, I create this motherfucker for monetization. Entertainment purposes only. Nigga, I don't give a damn about that. So you're not a celebrity? Oh, uh, no. 
So and that's not what celebrities do? I don't know what celebrities do. I ain't now. I'm a nigga who talked his way into getting rich, making money. That's, that's not it. what celebrities do. That's not I, what rappers do. They don't I, use their voice to talk I, that I, shit to I don't get. know what they do, fam. They do. I don't know. But if I'm a celebrity or not, nigga, uh, I'm not here to help people. I help youth in real life. So I'm not going to come to the internet and waste my time, my energy, or my resources helping people from my platform. Mm. I do that in real life. Mm. So to, your, to, to your point, actions speak louder. Yeah. Than words, Because your actions... Help people in real life. Yeah, so I come but to the words, internet to do the totally opposite of what I did in real life. I catch. I come to the internet to be the opposite. Remember, I was a frustrated youth advocate. Mm -hmm. This was my outlet. Mm -hmm. This was my way of letting it out. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened to pop. Mm. Last words. Got anything to say? Uh... You can't fix the community until you fix what's in the mirror. And I think that's the problem that most black people are trying to have. Uh, we overlooking the mirror, the man in the mirror. We overlooking the woman we laying next to. We overlooking the children, only to come outside and try to fix the community. When we need to be making our beds up in the morning when we get up. We need to be dusting the house during it. So uh, that's the problem we have in this black people. We trying to fix everybody but us, starting in the mirror. Then when you come out the mirror, nigga repairing and trying to fix you, you look around at your wife and your kids and in the house and try to fix what's in the house. Then you step out on your porch and say, hey, neighbor. Then you look down the street and see what's wrong with the street. Then you go out into your community. But you don't start from nowhere but the mirror. That's the starting point. And I think that's what we forgetting as black people. I went and fixed me before I came to the internet and started saying uh, what was wrong in the community. Uh, I became the change that I wanted to see. In the process of, of doing that, I became famous. Uh, I found out that I got a gift in comedy. I discovered my talents that I didn't know I had as a kid. So, hey, nigga, fuck who mad. Nigga, it worked. And it's working. <laughs> my nigga. <laughs> Oh, man. Whew, boy. Man, just when, how long it gonna take for y'all release this? Cause this shit gonna break the internet. This, this shit gonna kill you. That's all right. And then when they get, when, hey, hey, what they say in, in the school? Ooh. Hey, man, but with all love, man, listen, can you follow the instructions? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Let me see. In unison, as we end things here at Funky Friday, we're gonna start with this camera right here. Then we're going to start in that camera, okay. second, in unison, and we're going to finish right here. And when I say all together, we're going to say one love. You all ready? Right, here we go. Right here, one finger, one pinky, one thumb, all together, one, one love. love. Charleston White, ladies and gentlemen. And we out, baby. <laughs> <laughs>